um, across the room, as time slows, you see a rift similar to the one that young Zelric opened, uh, but almost of a pure white light. Uh, not this, this dark bl- black rift up here on the wall. And pouring out from it are swarms of these tiny clockwork beetles. And they are swarming toward Zalric. Uh, this is a good time to roll initiative. Welcome back. Uh, this is session 26 of this campaign, um, which is very unique progress for me uh, in the course of that's October. Eight months, 26 sessions is um, remarkable for me. Um, so when we last left our heroes, uh, you fought and defeated the deathless fire giant general Fire Gaunt deep in the bowels of Mount Hotono, uh, preventing him from unleashing a volcanic eruption upon the region, the Neverwinter Wood, and likely Neverwinter itself. Um, you returned to Neverwinter, uh, to the Temple of Shantia, <laughs> Um, and met back up with Zephyr's family's tribe. Um, Zephyr spoke to them about possibly making a new home in Phandalin. Uh, they conferred amongst themselves and agreed uh, that they would like to do that. That night, um, Tarbin performed an awakening ritual on the old party pet, Lizbob, and uh, she emerged in the morning fully conscious, fully sentient, um, and a little trepidatious about that. Uh, That's got to be terrifying to happen to you, like, all at once. Um, You went back to Phandalin with uh, Zephyr's family's tribe. Uh, Everybody went, uh, got them set up in Phandalin, spoke to... um, uh, the town master, Lenin Greywind, um, and got the tribe set up there. So they are nomads no longer. They have a real home, once again. Um, Odakar retired from the arduous adventure life to Leilan to go and serve on the council. Um, it's becoming a, a politics man. Uh, and Lizbob joined the party full time um Zelric received a letter from uh, Amanjero the court wizard in Neverwinter informing him that the host tower of the arcane in Luskin had agreed to grant him uh, admission into the tower to search for whatever it is he may search for um and the party agreed to travel up to Luskin with him. Um, you used, I believe you used your new folding boat that you got, uh, that you found in uh, in Mount Hotno. Uh, so you got to travel essentially for free, which is nice. Um, you arrived in Luskin and uh, essentially went straight, I think you did a little bit of shopping, right? But basically you went straight for the, the host tower. Um, which is the map 
that we sit on currently. Um, in this grand entrance banquet hall to the host tower, um, you met Xander Silvermist, Zelric's old friend from Silvery Moon, uh, and he explained, uh, I believe in a whisper to Zelric, that Lady Illustrial Silverhand, the, the leader of Silvery Moon, asked him to come up here to uh, keep an eye on Zelric, you know, watch his back, that, that sort of thing. Um, he's not totally sure what's going on, but you, you know, he said, you don't say no to Lady Silverhand. And uh, he's very happy to see Zelric again and happy to meet you all. Lady Avalier, uh, who is floating up here as she eats her meal, um, greeted you all. Greeted is maybe a, a strong word. Um, uh, it gave an audience to, to Zelric, <laughs> uh, who explained you know, who he was, why he was here, uh, who the people are who are with him. And she said, yes, you know, you and your party are welcome here as guests, but as you are not members of the Arcane Brotherhood, uh, you must keep your research and other activities to the lower floors of this tower, and you will need a chaperone uh, who is a member of the Arcane Brotherhood. Xander uh, jumped up and volunteered uh, the Lady Avalier ascended and that's basically where we left it um so zelric i believe had explained to xander what he is here for right what what he's here to search for uh so zelric why don't you just kind of remind us all what zelric's hopes are in this tower okay um, so yeah, he would have explained... Uh, well, Xander already knows everything that happened with uh, Zelric's failed experiment and his wife and kid uh, being sucked through a time portal. Um, but he is hoping to find knowledge on planar stuff and their connection, or how you can influence planar rifts with time magic to create portals into time. Uh, he also is trying to better understand this prism prototype that he was given by uh, his friend Galio down in Leylon before he left. Um, and also just just generally just trying to find any tomes on chronomancy, because it's hard mm -hmm. to come by. Okay. Um, just hoping that something here in Luskin, because it's a super old mage tower, I've been here forever. Uh, maybe there's something here uh, that would help him in his endeavors to help locate or get a lead on locating his uh, family. Okay, excellent. I thought Cole was raising his hand for a second, but <laughs> he's not. Uh, just jump right in, it's okay. Um, okay, so, um, yeah, with that, uh, Xander will explain that he has an idea of um, essentially which library to start in. Um, and he knows that there are some old writings, uh, from, you know, some very accomplished mages in that library on the subjects, uh, that you're, that you're discussing. Um, can't really make many promises as to their reliability, right, entirely. <laughs> um, you know, this is, this is kind of a cutting edge not very well understood area of research, but if you're going to find anything, you know, he suggests the, the library um, up on the second floor, which is an area that you understand you are allowed to, you know, to visit as long as you are with your chaperone. Nope. Um, yeah, so we're, I mean, so works very antsy um, to try and find some stuff here. So he'll, follow after Xander carefully and he's probably not keeping the closest of eyes on his friends but he's hoping that they're <laughs> not doing anything that's going to get them in trouble okay uh, Lizbob is bored and just like licking her paw just like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm waiting to get to the books to try and read up on the primordial plane and how elementals work. Yes, that is something you mentioned last time. <laughs> okay. David's like, Must yeah. just wants to see if he Wait. can read a book. David's <laughs> like, let me chat GPT some stuff about the primary. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we may have a flashback <laughs> later to what you find, Zephyr. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, okay. Um, is is everybody going with Zelric and, and Xander as they begin to depart? Yeah. And What's Red Redmond and Z yeah. had a chat with Zelric. Uh, yeah, see, so Zelric is was saying the the last part of that where he said, "Don't touch anything that's magical, shiny, or old looking, and actually just don't touch anything at all, <laughs> unless it's handed to you or told to touch it." That's more of a not just to Redman. He says it to Redman and then looks at the entire group. <laughs> hey, the rest of us are pretty well behaved. I know, but some things sometimes you see something cool Redman. and you're like, "What if I just take it? What if I use it?" Redman. Can Yas and me just like toss you back and forth? <laughs> I would not like that one bit. <laughs> right. Keep drooling onto his legs. What the hell? But I'm bored. <laughs> um. Okay, so we will we'll stay on this map, right? Because, but um, <laughs> the Xander takes you up a spiral staircase and into a uh, very cramped, even interesting old library. Uh, I guess it's not that cramped. Um, <laughs> but I don't it know is with an owl bear and a yacht. That's true, with Maybe all of you. Are... <laughs> um, and you, I guess let's first let's do Zephyr. Zephyr, could you make me a, in, an investigation mm -hmm. check? to look for what you're looking for. I'm ready to roll bad because I wasted my 20. Alias. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> so, okay. Inspiration. Um, not wasting you, it. You find a, a book. The cover is just so faded and smoothed with, with time that, you know, you look at it and you say, oh, um, you know, you think you pick up, oh, this is on you know, primordial, um, the primordial planes, right? Um, this is great. And you're a little bit, it takes you like, so like page four or five of reading through this before you realize, um, you know, going through, you're like, wow, this is written in like this really cool cipher or like really cool, like metaphorical language. You know, this is amazing. Uh, it takes you several pages until you realize, no, th this is a cookbook. This is... <laughs> This is just a cookbook. This is not about. And uh, so you you could keep looking, uh, but we'll we'll do a flashback later to when you eventually find something. Uh, and I, I would like to, to check this book out. I would like to try out some of these primordial <laughs> cuisines. Yeah. Um. Uh, I will say Zelric, uh, just because we have time walking, would yeah. be casting uh, comprehend languages on himself. Just in case he comes across anything that he can't read himself, because that'll okay. allow him to uh, understand any written language that I can see. Okay, I just right. have to be touching the surface that the words are on. So, gotcha. You, you should check that on me. Uh, Zephyr, did you mention food? I, I found a book about ancient cooking methods. Oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. We're not <laughs> eating the book. We're gonna see if we can check this book out to test the cuisine. Um, food later. Oh man! <laughs> you know what? I ate, we ate this before we came out. There was so there was so much food downstairs. There's so much food downstairs. You're not eating <laughs> any of it. I didn't want to be rude. This oh. <laughs> I'll just pass some of the like eat. berries and some like insta oatmeal that are in like the rations, and just start <laughs> handing it to Liz Bob without saying anything, just acting like it's normal. Okay. <laughs> Maybe a cracker every now and then. Yeah. If she's good. You just hear like it's quiet and you're just, just... <laughs> crunch. <laughs> um. Yeah, Liz Bob is now attached to Zephyr. <laughs> Zelric, can you, why don't you make me an investigation check? Okay. As as you and Xander are looking. Hey. 
Oh, I'm uh, re-rolling that with my inspiration because it's a net one. (laughs) (laughs) That's a lot better. That's a lot better. Okay. Um, You scan through some titles pretty... um, Just from all the research you've done, some of these you've seen before, some of these you've seen copies of in Galio's library, and, you you know, I looked at that, you know, useless, useless charlatan like worse than useless this guy had no idea what he was talking about uh and then you your fingers kind of come across a book um that you have not seen before and it is in excellent condition surprisingly excellent condition um because when you pull it down you see this book titled tasha's temporal trials and uh, the AI misspellings are just a function of the weird dialect. It's just it's just arcane and ruins. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, trials. <laughs> it's trials. <laughs> um, Local dialect. Yeah. And uh, Xander sees you. You pull this down and kind of rushes over excitedly. Right. He says this. He's like, we we have we have a Tasha. We have a Tasha here. I didn't even know that. Um, and you would recognize many of you, you know, at this point, probably have heard of Tasha, uh, a very, very famous um, wizard uh, who spent has spent a lot of time in the Feywild, right? Um, but you know, kind of stories of her, you know, have reached even here. Um, Zelric, it is a bit odd. I don't know about odd. It's a bit surprising to you that Tasha <laughs> may have written a book on time magic. It's not necessarily one of the areas that she was known to have, um, you know, to have mastered right at a at, at this kind of just legendary level. Um, but as you look through it, uh, you see this is a book that discusses. Uh, various experiments that she and, you know, wizards that she worked with conducted in time exploration, in time travel. Um, Most of the experiments are, well, all the experiments are are, are very, you know, detailed, like at a scientific, you know, paper level, right? Very detailed. It's exactly what we did step by step. And, um, you're flipping through, you know, see, this didn't work, you know, this one didn't work. Uh, this one took us back, like, three seconds. This one took the wizard back three seconds in time, and they they stayed there forever, uh, and it was, it was awful. <laughs> um, you know, this wizard exploded. Uh, but the, you come to one that uh, she says was a qualified success. Um... You come to an experiment that the book says successfully allowed the wizard to establish uh, a temporary time bridge to a specific past event in a specific location from the wizard's past, allowing them to observe in precise detail um, from any you know angle position they wanted what happened um unfortunately physical interference with the event itself uh the experimenters were not able to accomplish so this is um time travel for the purposes of observation not for changing anything that happened um the experiment uh, explains that the wizard creating the time bridge could even carry others with them uh as they go through the time bridge to this this past event and in fact um and this is where the the text gets bold and much larger uh says doing so is advisable bringing others with you is advisable um every time this experiment was conducted and someone went over the time bridge to to the past uh to observe an event this action brought the wrath of waves of constructs um 
culminating in what the book describes as an inevitable. Uh, the book says an inevitable is an immensely powerful being from the planar city of Sigil, the city of doors, sent to enforce the laws of time. Uh, this Zelric, since you are a kroner, just would be, I would say, confirmation of maybe some stories you've you've heard or like snippets of research that you've seen, right? Um, that there is some entity out there among the planes that charges itself or is charged with enforcing the laws of time and uh, does so with extreme prejudice, um, if, if necessary. Um, Tasha has a note in here. Uh, where she explained, you know, it's clear from this note that that even Tasha herself, the very powerful wizard that she is, uh, really fears these inevitables. And um, she has an advisory that the wizard, you know, must ex expeditiously learn what they came to the past to find and then cut the link, right? Cut the link and, and come back to the present side of the time bridge. And only the wizard who creates the time bridge can cut the lick. Um, so this is what uh, the book says. I guess, Eddie, if you have any questions or thoughts about what else might be in the book or any clarifications from anybody. So is the inevitable essentially just a form of TVA society that keeps the timelines going and flowing in the correct path that they should? That's kind of the beat that's, I'm getting from it. That's yeah, that, that's fair, right? Um, you know, as described here, right? Um, yeah, somebody messes with the laws of time. Uh, these extra planar creatures are aware of it and try to put a stop to it. So, is it is it simply the act of creating the link, or is it creating the link and then? trying to mess with something after the link's been created in the past it is not specified not certain. In okay. here. yeah does this seem um sort of similar to what zelric had tried in the past but this is just a more successful version um because that's that's kind of what zelric was attempting to do mm -hmm. um was to make just like a little viewing portal that he could just see not it's not like a specific location it's yeah. just some random point in time so uh, this would maybe be a more advanced version of that and a version okay. that that might tick off the inevitables okay. more right? yeah because was mine, you are was more like a window and this is more like i'm stepping into this place yes kind of thing okay yes yeah you're, you're stepping into the place um so Xander is, is kind of reading over your shoulder as you flip through, and he's very excited by this. Um, and Zelric, this... I mean, this could be a way to, to go back and see, to see where they went, maybe, right? If, if, you can, if you can go back to that day, if you can look through the rift from, from outside, don't you think you might see what something something more than you know now we have to be careful obviously but um yeah yeah yes it would it would be highly beneficial to be able to go back and it'd be great to be able to pinpoint where um or possibly when uh, they were sent back to. But the dangers of this is high. Um, I mean, confirming that there is this plane of existence where some type of time god or um, whatever you would call it is not super happy about people messing uh, 
with reality in that way. Um, and reading this makes me think that I got lucky that more didn't happen whenever I attempted mine. But you didn't actually um, go into it. You just looked. No, well, outside that was it. that was the original. The original attempt at the ritually casting of the spell was to just make a window to view through it. Um, but something happened, and it created this rift. Um, and as far as I know, I believe it shunted me into the astral plane. Um, but I'm unsure. I, I felt like this immense, uh, like raw feeling of magic. Um, I mean, it felt as if I could, I was numb, but I was feeling everything all around me in like a thousand times immensity than what I'm, what you normally feel, uh, all just convoluting at once. Um, and, and then that's whenever, um, she had walked in and, and I reached out towards her trying to get back to where the rift was and I was shunted out as her and my daughter were pulled in. <clears throat> so if you could make a window, could you make a door? I mean, that is essentially what this spell but is saying. It's making a doorway. Control. It's That's what essentially this, this tome is saying, is that there's a spell that allows you to create a doorway that you can enter into and see this past event. It just has to be localized where you are, I'm assuming, right? You have to go to lo the location to be able to cast it, or you can just go only somewhere that you have been previously. You don't have to actually go to that location. Somewhere you are familiar with. You don't have to okay. actually go to that location. Okay, um, okay. Gotcha. Because physically, physically, you aren't really going there necessarily, right? right? Yeah. You're you know, you're in like time space into the past and you're getting this almost like <laughs> VR uh, image of it. Um, so as long as it's a place kind of you would know how to go, you can go and get that perspective. Uh, the inevitables, you know, they have no problem going into time space to, to try to enforce their laws. So um, in terms of what... You know, you probably can't interact to, you know, you won't really be able to interact with the things that physically existed in that space. Uh, but from the book, it sounds like you will be able to interact with any inevitables <laughs> uh, because they will be trying to interact with you. Um. So could you go back and open a door and stop you from doing the experiment to begin with. I, that's not entirely what, I don't think that's what this is saying. This is just allowing, I can take myself and others through this Do doorway it. that lets us just kind of walk through the space in like a 3D environment, but we're not actually there. We are just viewing it from the, an outside perspective. We don't, we're not actually in the space, we're just viewing the the, work, the area in which like the the time took place in. So we're just going Nobody back to the moment and looking. We'll so we're see not us actually, and now we're there, right? Yeah, we're not actually Correct. affecting anything. So could you eventually be able to modify the spell to go back and change things and not just be a spectator? That sounds like a really um, easy solution to your problem. <laughs> that way, yeah, that would be the big fix to it, as if I could just go back and stop myself. But who knows what that would cause? Would then, if I did that, would I have been even had come onto this? The, 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 it depends how I don't know how relative time works here, out of character. Uh, but it, it could spawn as if I did that would that event had even happened because I had went back to stop myself from it happening. Um, so... Who let a butterfly yeah, in just... here? <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm sure. I don't think I can modify this. I don't think I no. quite... 
I mean, you're just looking to see the where they went, yeah. so maybe you can go there. That yeah, I think I think getting to be able to view a landmark or something to just go off of. So maybe I can find some record of them or something um, as to maybe how yeah. far back they were sent. Um, and you have um, you have the prism now that you showed me. Um, says, yeah. Says Xander. I that may be able to. I don't know. Maybe that may be able to show you more, right? That may be some kind of catalyst mm -hmm. that will allow you to see things that you couldn't see the first time. I don't. I don't know, but. You have more tools. You have more friends. Um, this is... It certainly looks dangerous. And... No one would think you unreasonable if... You... Thought it too much. Liz Bob, are you getting any of this? Red Bob has found something and she's like tossing it up and like playing. <laughs> oh my so, god. god. Selric, Selric looks up and goes, Liz Bob, what are you? Did you not hear me downstairs? <laughs> Don't throw the crystal where did, ball. Where did you get it? Edmund's <laughs> just like pointing. Like, <laughs> it's like I didn't oh, no, it. See, it wasn't me. It wasn't me this time. I didn't do it this time. <laughs> Zephyr, Zephyr started talking to you and stopped giving me snacks. So I, I don't know. I got bored. You were getting snacks. I want a snack. I and guess Lydia I'll give hands out some snacks. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what kind of snacks, Adelantis? Whatever I have in my pack. Okay. <laughs> some, some peanut butter crackers. <laughs> Yeah. Is, that, is this, is this a woman? Okay. No. Liz Bob is not Odin. Is, is this, is like this a woman? No. Oh, thank God. I'm allergic to almonds. <laughs> I know. I wouldn't give you Turns a Turns out it was. Yas just goes in there. What do almonds <laughs> look like? That's what does Yas in, is almonds. <laughs> yeah. Just an allergic reaction. <laughs> it's our shrimp. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I would like to cast it or attempt to, I don't even know if I am capable, uh, well, probably not here. I imagine not there's, I imagine here. there might be there is, some place um, we could go or there might be some room here. I'm assuming that we could the use for magical training that would probably be better suited. How quiet do you think you all can be? Mm, I can be Liz Bob, really, how quiet do you think you can be? I can be quiet if I... <laughs> Zelrig is doing this and looking at the opposite <laughs> Liz Bob. <laughs> like, oh. Um... Why am I getting the eyes? <laughs> I haven't this seen This huge. This, <laughs> this shirt that Paula gave me is very loud. Yeah. The... I, I shake Liz Bob middle is okay, Liz rough. Bob... I do have path without a trace. That would be very beneficial. That that would be that would be excellent. Um, Atalantis, it was. Give me destruction. Yes, Addy. Okay, Addy. Yes, Xander. Uh, lovely. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Uh, yes. Let's work together here. Um, you cover our tracks with your spell. I will silence our clinking, uh, my owl bear friend, and all else with another. Um, and then we will need to move quickly. There is a place, Zelric, that looks like meets the specifications for the experiment. Um, it is a few floors up from here, and it will not be fun for any of us if we are spotted. Talking about breaking the rules. Yeah, we're not supposed to go but third floor, buddy. Can yeah, we race? Right. Thank you. Yes, we're all caught up. Excellent. Uh, I, I think I need to report <laughs> you to the head mage lady. 
Okay, uh, Addy, are you ready? Because this is a lot of loose talk, and I'm ready for one. Um, before we head off, I'm going to cast... I haven't used this very much because I haven't had a chance to come up, but I'm going to cast my uh, wrist pocket spell, which lets Ooh. me store anything that weighs less than five pounds to like a little extra dimensional pocket, and I can access it anytime as long as I'm concentrating. Oh, cool. Spell. It lasts for nice. an hour. All right, um, what are you sticking in there? Uh, I'm grabbing the book. Okay. And, and the cookbook. You tell me you could have had, you could have had five pounds yes, of snacks. Cast. Five pounds. Five pounds. You can, you can bring the cookbook, too. Okay. Adelaida's cast is Pass Without a Trace. Uh, from materializing from the air, uh, are, you know, you just see, like, soft, uh, dandelion puffs. What the hell is it called? You know, you know, dandelion white poofs. Uh, just materialize in the air and, like, drift down and disappear when they hit the ground. Um, and you all feel much quieter. <laughs> um, you feel even more quieter <laughs> when Xander casts uh, the silence spell upon uh, his ring that he's wearing. And you hear nothing. Right. While while this is cast, um, you are completely deafened, but you are also confident that no noise that you would be making, you know, would escape the the radius of this spell. Liz Bob is a little scared of this. Yeah, this is having a full blown panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you you can't hear whatever Liz Bob does. No, you're completely silent. She screeches and can't hear herself. <laughs> and sees that and hand. just fucking, which makes it okay. When Addie grabs her hand, she comes just down a little it. bit. Okay, I'll pat it. Okay, uh, and I'll Xander motions for you all to follow him into uh, a smaller staircase at the end of the hall. If, if we're breaking the rules, Yas would like to just grab a book off the shelf real quick. Okay, <laughs> just uh, grab it. We're breaking all the rules. Might as well do it, baby. Fuck it. Fuck it. Not that you can hear me, it's just... Zorg's uh, like, oh my god, who did I bring with me? It's okay, the you, book um... that you stole is gonna be the book that David's gonna be like, yeah, that's the primordial book. <laughs> that <laughs> is exactly what happens. That's good. Yes. Yas grabs a random book, and later <laughs> on, <laughs> Zephyr will be like, holy shit, this is it. <laughs> Alright. Well, man, I can't read I this. <laughs> So you grab the book and Xander is urging you all to hurry. <laughs> and uh, why doesn't everybody roll a stealth check? Um, if you have disadvantage from armor, don't worry about it because you're silenced. So that cause, so that wouldn't affect it. And uh, remember, you can add everybody can add an extra plus ten. Dex checks. I'm so good That's at this. Right. I can That's... I can reroll Parker's Nat one if I need to. Um, you probably <laughs> won't. Okay. Because that means the lowest roll is a twelve. And yeah, you're yeah. That, you know we've got a twenty nine, a nineteen, another twenty nine, a twenty seven, and an eighteen. You guys are fine, right? Oh, For group so checks, you can. Plus thirteen. You... So I actually had a twenty. <laughs> and okay, <laughs> yeah. So group checks, you kind of can like cover for each other, you know, a bit, right? Um, you can use a high roll. Uh, Bob, yeah, does like you know trip and fall, like face plant. Uh, I'm just like pulling her along, kicking and screaming. Come on, uh, but, yeah. holding her hand. <laughs> no, but she you... felt like I'm dragging her. <laughs> you make it. Up this staircase, Xander, like, looking left and right, um, seeing, you know, kind of telling you to wait when there's a member of the Brotherhood, you know, passing an intersection and then rushing you along. And ultimately brings you into this laboratory what where he doing? drops his silent spells. And um, you can hear each other talk again. Liz and, don't uh, screech. Yes, what? Liz Bob. No, we still don't we screech. Still, don't screech. We we still need to be mindful, right? Um, That's right. It's yes, it's okay. 
Uh, we should still be mindful, but um, we should be okay in here. Uh, this is relatively soundproof room. I don't think it was tested to Owlbear Screech specifications. Uh, <laughs> let's not test it now. Um, but Zelric, I think we can use this room. Um, and the, if you recall from the notes in the margin, um, in the pages detailing the experiment, uh, for the for the catalyst wizard's own benefit, how well there could be some thrashing involved, some uh, unpleasantness. There's um, well, the seat of honor. Your seat of honor is, is is right up there. I can I can prepare the the material components from this side. Uh, do the incantations and well, and I suppose keep guard in case anyone comes in. Um, but really, once you're ready, well, I suppose you're ready. <clears throat> Could we make an illusion that the room has no one in it while we are in it? Um, mm, any of like our it, you can just... I don't have major image. <laughs> it's not possible for Zoric to do <laughs> So for just put your blanket at the doorway so that they yeah. know not to come in. There you go. Oh. Yeah, just put a do not disturb. Just button. hang it down. Yeah. They'll know. They'll know what it means. Yeah. Just wrap it around the doorknob outside. Yeah, right. put a, just, put just a, put a like a room under maintenance. Do not disturb. Is that door to the, the yellow, south? Like the yellow only, tag on the door. The only entrance in here. This door is the only entrance in here. Yes. You can so, teleport. Then I'm gonna set a snare. Okay. Great. Oh, love this one. Right there. Whatever. Right there. Let's. Uh, but I'll look at. I'll look to uh, Xander and ask him if. Oh, now you ask. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I think the hmm, <clears throat> the consequences of getting caught here are probably worse than. Hmm, I don't think somebody being strung up upside down, I'd be embarrassment from that would um, significantly increase the consequences of getting caught in the first place. We'll put it that way. So, Excellent. I'll go yes. to work and I'm setting uh, that snare up. All right. So you do that. Uh, the rope disappears. Uh, but I have marked it. And um, so Zelric, just a little, this is like half above the table, half not, right? Um, now we'll run through those Lumi. well let's run through them now sorry um, before you go so general rules about where you're going that you would understand from having read you know the description of this experiment and talking to Xander about it okay um, according to the book it is a matter of when, not if, the waves of enforcers arrive, right? Um, Zelric, as the catalyst wizard crafting the bridge, um, you will have to decide when to cut the link and return everyone back here, right? Um, you are the only one who can magically do that, you must be conscious to do that. Okay. Um, that's something that if we are in initiative, you can do, you know, that would be what you would use your turn to do. Okay. Um, when he cuts it, all of us come back? Yes. Yeah, so I don't feel like I have to, like, okay, everyone has to get through this doorway first before I can say it stops. Correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, each round... That we are, if we end up in initiative, <laughs> uh, each round when we are in initiative, uh, Zelric, your options will be to. Um, Chloe. I would say look, if your goal is to look into the rift, right, to find information, uh, you can use your turn to do that. Alternatively, you can use your turn to do anything else, right? Um, 
deal with anything else that might be going on. Or you can use your turn to cut the time bridge. Mm-hmm. So what that means is uh, Zelric is going to be relying on a lot of backup. If his goal is to learn as much information as possible, that is what Zelric is going to be spending his turns doing, and he's going to need, you know, he may need backup from his friends if these things start to arrive. These are all kind of just conclusions that, you know, you would understand from the from the book. So. And he would have told us these things. Yeah, I would have, yeah. I would have third laid yeah. it once we got up here. And as, like, we're setting up and getting uh, components and stuff set out, I would inform everybody that I might not be in a position to help stuff. And if things <laughs> come through, I'm going to need some protection. How loud is it if I cast a vocal spell? I know that it's audible, but how far is it audible? Uh, you have to scream at the top of your lungs. <laughs> Probably not out of this room, really. I mean, this is a big room, right? And he said it has been soundproofed to some extent, so I... You know, if it's not like thunderclap, then it's probably okay. <laughs> I shouldn't no. pass that. Got it. <laughs> I'm wanting to buff Zelric with Death Ward. Oh, nice. I don't want him to potentially get disintegrated by a mage while we're in there, and we're stuck in astral space. Yeah, so that would disgusting. hopefully give him an extra turn to get us out. New character. <laughs> You guys are just That's stuck true. reliving Zelric's like most traumatic <laughs> experience of his life over and over again. <laughs> also, shield of faith him once we go through. Okay. Like as soon I as we kind of ready the action, so as soon as we go through, I can. Yeah. Shield of faith him. Okay, great. Yeah, you I will would, definitely have yeah. an opportunity to to do that before. Yes. So, <laughs> uh, good thoughts. Yeah. Any other strategizing? Um, I'm a fucking elder, man. <laughs> rip, rip, rip off heads. Rip things up. <laughs> I just give Zelda a hug. Oh, thanks, thanks, buddy. I was trying to see if I had my uh, my little reroll ability. I was going to give it to some people, but I do not because I don't think mm. I have very many pearls left. So I got rid of it for a second. Ah. Uh. Redman is yeah. kind of confused, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, he would talk to Zelric. And what are we, what are we getting into? Bridges. Um, on the low level of danger side, we are just viewing a, a, my past um, and trying to gather some information as to what happened what led it to happen and possibly they said finding information about where my wife and daughter got sent to or when something along those lines on the high end of danger um there are these constructs called the inevitable from i can't remember i didn't write the city name down uh sigil yeah, the city of Sigil, yeah. um, which I believe is like on a plane of time, and they are sent there by some kind of god, goddess, mystical being who oversees the flow of time and doesn't like people messing with it too much. Um, so, depending on how long we're in here, they will inevitably show up. Um, so. Goal is get in quick as much information as possible and get out before things get too dicey. But what I'm gathering is, if you need more time, even if they show I, up, yeah. we just need to protect you and yes. give you that time. Yeah. Okay. Um, goal is to keep that. me as conscious as possible. Yeah. <laughs> if I if I go unconscious, I cannot get us out. Understood. Um, did, did the book ba- specify ba- if we can speak or is it? Kind of like a I what your believe. friend Xander did, and it is just a silent place. Ooh. Um, uh, I'm not sure about that. Really, it like it's not silent, silent. Let's say I might don't... not be able to cast yeah. spells. Let's say we the book did not specify. Okay. 
So that'll be something you'll have to figure out when you yeah. are through. So if we can't hear each other, we just have to point and watch carefully. Bag. We yeah. gotta protect the bookman. Liz Bob. Liz Bob, sit still for a second. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> um, yeah, because Xander's gonna get the ritual started. Um, but once it's started and I'm basically being a conduit for it, I'm the thing that stops or starts it. Um, he has no control over it. So even if he sees something facial wise of us getting hurt or damaged in some kind of way or something seems to be going wrong to us here um he has no way to stop it he is kind of just a bystander at that point so i'm gonna give liz bob my little frog to play with my golden frog <laughs> She needs to do something. <laughs> She's antsy. There it is. Hey, it's right there. A little fidget toy. Uh, <laughs> actually, genuinely has the zooks. <laughs> She's just checking out the pumpkins, guys. And then... <laughs> I have no Liz, idea. What Liz Bob, come over here. And, and Xander tries to like explain, kind of like he would a child. Like, look, look at this. These mechanisms over here. Like, here's how they work. Right? Like, isn't that cool? You know, don't touch. Like we, we, yeah, no, no, no. We just here, just look. We learn with our eyes, Lisbon, right? <laughs> and our ears. But yes, right? uh, <laughs> and then it gives Zalric look like, man, I don't know how long I can keep this up. <laughs> it's it, yeah. <laughs> well, while he's teaching Lisbon that, Yas is just gonna start touching stuff now. Ah, Yas. <laughs> I'm gonna say okay. I think it's, I, I great. I think I'm as ready as I can be, guys. Okay, let's let's, do let's get going. Let's All right. Get Lord, teach me how to read. Everyone, gather up. Yeah. I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready. Did they write this with paint? Yas, Lizbot, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Do that only. <laughs> um, Xander uh, straps no. you in Zelric to this, uh, you know, this kind of angled, um, uh, you know, platform bed. Uh, whatever, and um, yeah, tells you know, kind of motions for everyone to to gather around. You know, everyone, please lay a hand on Zelric so that he's able to pull you through. Um, he, whoops, what are you doing here, buddy? Okay, he uh, mixes a few reagents over here. You know, kind of using the book as a reference. Uh, brings it over, hands um, hands this vial, I guess to Yas. <laughs> because uh, Zelric's hands are strapped out. Do says, this. Yas, don't, 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 don't drink it. Please give it to I'm not Zelric. drinking it. What, what, good, do, what do I do? You uh, tell me. Please pour it pour it into the mouth of, of uh, Bookman. Yeah. You call Bookman, me. open up. Uh, <laughs> water uh, warning. Just he, poured me real quick. <laughs> just <laughs> all over your forehead. <laughs> Comes over here. He throws this lever and uh these like tesla coils begin just going off all through the room uh zelric oh, this fuck. is very unpleasant you you know current is is running through your body um it is all you can do not to to try to thrash and he says okay zelric it's when you're ready when you're ready yeah have fun casting that hey <laughs> uh yeah. i will whatever the arcane that stuff i need yeah. to do i will do uh, just it's just a matter of will. It's just you know mentally you decide we're going. Okay. Uh, hey, so hard... make sure to give me a warning, okay? Hard, hard to concentrate and try and meditate on the situation with the pain he's feeling. Um, but he will just try to lividly just repeat the events that happened over and over again to get the vivid picture of his workshop. Uh, the moment as he's setting up the ritual, as he's walking through, and the very beginnings of it starting um and that's where he will take the group to the moment that the rift opens um and be i guess after he be sucked in his wife enters the room okay uh so you will go through it is yeah it's difficult to to kind of focus you're seeing like um you're seeing silvery moon you're seeing like the exterior of your of your home seeing like all the different rooms in your home and the pain subsides as you appear uh, let me open this 
Uh, you appear in, along with your friends in the foyer of your home in Silverman. Let me see if I can get this music going. There we go. Um, through the open door behind you, you can see the you know the stairs. Uh, you know, the short stairs leading up to your home. You could see the street of uh, Silvery Moon in front of your home for maybe 15, 20 feet, and then it all just kind of fades into what you would recognize as like the Astral Sea, right? That just that kind of pure swirling magic. Um, you look out the windows to your west here, same kind of thing, right? This house in this space seems to exist you know kind of in its own island in time space hey, hey, fuck um, are we? I, he will look around at his friends um, make sure they all arrived safely with him um, Liz then, Bob is still like clutching on to you <laughs> <laughs> um and he will I will, I'll try to say follow me if I'm allowed to speak. You are. You are well, able to speak I, and the others can hear you. Yes. Okay. Then I will say come this way and I will move towards this door. Okay. You recognize that as the door to your, your the old door to your kitchen. Okay. Um inside is A woman you recognize, um, humming to herself as she is, you know, preparing a meal in the kitchen. Uh, this is your wife, Alara Grayscar. God damn! Zellerick pulled a baddie. <laughs> Zellerick can pull. <laughs> Holy shit, but man, what the fuck? I mean, <laughs> he impressed her with his ABCs. Um, you, and I should say this, sorry, you, uh, would remember, Zelric, because you haven't seen this event before, sorry, uh, your workshop, you know, you remember your workshop is upstairs, uh, in this home, right? Um, okay. well, you know, you remember your dining room, kitchen, or here. here, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. Um, she obviously seems not to notice us. She does not seem to notice you whatsoever, Yeah. Okay. Uh, any of um, um, and lead everyone into the room up here. Okay. Yeah, you find you. You know, you're able to like walk on the floors in here. Uh, it feels like a little weird, like a little soft almost, right? As you're walking on the floors. Um, but they they do seem to support you in the sense that they seem to understand what you're trying to do. Right, you're trying to walk on the floor. Uh, kind of like when you try to tell AI to make like a book title. Like it kind of gets what you're trying to do, but not totally. Uh, that's what it feels like. Um, <laughs> but if you try to like, if you are trying to like do my my new interactions with anything, uh, you know, it just you you just can't have that level of interaction with things, right? So, uh, yes, to your east, you see stairs going up. He will ascend the staircase and around it to go upstairs. Redmond's right. really curious about this statue. Okay. And he would have asked Zelric about it before everybody left. Okay. Zelric, there is a bust on a little end table here. Um, what, what is it? It's your house. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um... <laughs> I would imagine maybe it's a bust of, like, Elminster, uh, the wizard. Um, kind of like right-hand guy to the goddess of magic, Mistra. Um, just kind of as like a, I wouldn't say altarpiece, um, but just kind of as like his, like, respecting his superiors in magic. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Um, and it's also a very prominent historical and magical figure, so. Good enough for me, sir. Yeah, excellent. 
Um, a lot of books. Okay, who's going upstairs? I do have, I do have a lot so of books. Go upstairs. So I'm let's following up the stairs. Do this. I'm just gonna move you guys to make it easier to <laughs> move over. Oh. There we go. Okay, don't be alarmed. Well, no, I will drag you. Over and up, down. Okay. Uh, you are, you know, now you can ascend the stairs. Cool. So you said we're will keep going up the stairs and okay. then stop once he gets on top. Yes. I think at this point, Atalantis wants to shield of faith, Zelric. Okay. All right. Let's pop uh, concentration at Atlantis. We have some fancy new uh, tokens or whatever. Yeah. Token thingies. Cool. Shield. Uh, I got. I was just so tired of the old ones. I just hated <laughs> them so much. <laughs> um, yeah, and so what? You... I didn't see it. Oh, there it is. AC. Yeah. So what you see in this room, uh, you all see a younger Zelric, um, alone in what looks like um, a wizard's workshop, right? You know, shelves of uh, magical books on the walls. Um, he's got uh, you know various components, you know, on a, on a desk over here, various reagents, and. You see um, young Zelric here setting out various components in a circle here, which looks like looks a lot like a, a circular rug on this map, but it's not. It is uh, uh, setting out these magical components in this circle and then drawing around them uh, in chalk to make this chalk circle on the floor. And he... Uh, pulls out a parchment and begins chanting this magical incantation, focusing on a large pearl that has been set in the center of the circle. Um, arcane symbols appear on the floor within the circle and begin glowing. A small crack mm -hmm. appears in the pearl that's in the center. Um, and you see young Zalric smile. Uh, the glowing lights from all of these arcane symbols flood to the center, flood into this pearl, and that crack in in the pearl uh, grows and widens. Um, around you, suddenly, papers, pages from all these books uh, fly out from the books, begin swirling around the room. Um, some unseen, unfelt wind uh, sending these, you know, into a whirl. Um, and then the pearl splits, and this black rift appears da -da, in the space so the screen TV? It. Yeah. <laughs> uh, appears in the space above it. Um, young Zelric is ecstatic at this. Uh, he reaches his hands out uh, in, in various motions, kind of from far, you know, from 10 feet away, widening this rift, you know, opening it. Um, what he does not seem to realize at all is he is being pulled very slowly closer and closer to this rift, dragged across the floor until it is too late uh once he realizes this um you you hear him kind of yell and frantically you know he looks like he's trying to to shut this thing down but he can't he is sucked inside and he disappears you hear zelric's voice from inside the rift screaming alara 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 help and you hear the pounding of footsteps 
up the stairs behind you, running through you, through your bodies, is Alara Grayscar. Uh, she rushes in, she sees this tear in space, and she cries out for Zelric, trying to figure out what's going on. Across the room, down here, you see a door open. And you see a young girl, scared, crying, rush out. Zelric, you see your daughter, Lyra. She runs out, um, she runs over to her mother, grabs her hand, you know, mommy, mommy, where's, where's dad? What happened? What's going on? And you see her begin to be pulled towards this rift. Uh, you see Alara, the mother, you know, trying to, trying to grab her, trying to pull her back. And the pull is too strong. And they are both forced through this rift as well and disappear. <clears throat> Zelric, you need to go look through there. Did um, you guys notice that she walked through me? That's what you're out. caught up on? <laughs> uh, she Zelric is probably completely focused on this. Liz, Bob, you're right next to this window. Uh, outside, you see that the rain that was pounding down earlier that you could see out the window, again, only for like 20 feet outside, uh, that rain that was pounding earlier um, has slowed to a crawl. Not that there is less rain, less water, but the raindrops themselves are inching downward, glacially slow. And you all get the sense that even here in this space, time has slowed almost to a halt. Um, across the room, as time slows, you see a rift similar to the one that young Zelric opened, uh, but almost of a pure white light, uh, not this, this dark bl black rift up here on TV. the wall. And pouring out from it are swarms of these tiny clockwork beetles. And they are swarming toward Zelric. Uh, this is a good time to roll initiative. <laughs> Zelric. <laughs> Uh, no, you, me and Parker are not the same. Have you found? Have you seen what you needed to see yet? Um, no, I, I still need to look um through the rift itself. I haven't. I have not. So what the book said uh, is is essentially you will, waves of these constructs. You know, every time waves of constructs arrived culminating in an inevitable um so you zelric will have to decide what the oh shit moment is but i think it's fair to say the appearance of an inevitable is a good candidate if it has not happened already so you know zelric would understand that um so far this is this is what you see. So I have Adelandis, I have Redman, I have Zulric. Um Let's see. Let's add Yas. Is Greg, Bob what's your dex? What's that? What is Greg's dex? Uh, plus three. All right, you get the tie. Adelandis gets the tiebreaker on this, Bob, I believe. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, we had an 18 yep. and 22 for Zephyr. 22 for Zephyr. 
He's definitely messing around. Atalantis is going to yell to Zelwerk and say, get what you need. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of you get to react before these. Wow. Your lowest initiative was a 14. And it was Zelwerk. That's, That's perfect. It's, That's it's, perfect. It's okay. Yeah. So, uh, Zephyr, you're up. Uh, these these swarms, huge swarms, pour out of this rift on the wall. I'm gonna look at Liz, Bob, and Yoss and tell them to front line for Zelric, protect him at all costs, <clears throat> and I'm gonna try and jump through the portal and okay. just observe any information that I can. Okay. And then everyone else like try and protect him. I I will do my best to remember anything and everything I can, assuming I don't just plop onto the couch behind it. You Damn plop it. onto the couch behind it. Damn. You do. Most part of the ride thought was going to happen to you. <laughs> you are... Yeah, me too. I thought it was going to be stuck. Zephyr turns into a meatball. <laughs> yeah, you are uh, physically unable to interact with this this thing in this oh. time space. Yeah. Shit. Um, can you see you... into it, though? Yeah, so so Zephyr, as you ran, you know, as you were like looking into it, um, you saw essentially what Zelric described to you from his experience. Uh, you saw just um, almost like swirling pure magical energy, right? Um, distant stars yeah. collapsing and exploding, you know, in in like a matter of seconds. Yeah. Um, you did not see any people, right? Just almost, you, basically the astral sea is what it looked like that you saw. Okay. Um, this is so that's my 30. Just your that's just your movement, so. Yeah, that's my 30 where I ended up. It took okay. uh, 20 to jump into the fake portal, okay. land behind it. So that was technically 25 and then 30s right here. Okay. So um, we're changing our plans and we're gonna drop a fifth level um spirit guardians okay concentrate and what's the radius on that um it is a 15 foot radius around me 15. boom there you go and what do your guardians look like as they swirl around you they It's a good question. I don't think we've ever gone over what they look like. I think we've talked about it once. We did. Yeah, it's, up, it's up to you. But you've gone through some changes since then. Change it up. Uh, what is your you heart know what? desire? Fuck it. <laughs> Taking inspiration from the Clockwork Beetles and our recent events with the Fire Giant, they're going to look like mechanical Clockwork Automaton soldiers cool. with armor, or just with magma just oozing out of nice. the like armor platings nice okay those begin swirling around zephyr passing harmlessly through zelric redmond and, and lizbob um but they appear to not be so harmless for the beetles uh okay any bonus action that's all i can do okay redmond you're up and then we have yas couldn't have gotten any closer huh <laughs> <laughs> all right well then that being said uh i think redmond is going to i bet these things are pretty dexterous so i'm not gonna do that and are these considered maybe constructs uh they do appear to be constructs yes Son of a gun, of course. Well then. Uh, Redman is going to cast Blur on himself. Okay. Blur. All right, and uh, Redman becomes shifting like half illusory kind of get like a little bit of a headache when you like try to focus on him and when he does it he just kind of like throws his hands up and they do like a 
quick like whirlwind around himself. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's what happens. It becomes very hard to focus on. Okay. All right. Are you moving anywhere or sticking uh, there? Uh, I am going to move. Okay. I just don't know yet where, because I thought maybe somebody would help out the rogue. Uh, False. <laughs> uh, it, no cantrips, right? Now that I cast a spell. Only if it's a bonus action cantrip. Right, oh. you've, you've used your action. Oh, all right, well. Does he want to hide? He does. Eh, he does want to hide. Okay. So he's going to try to use the uh, the stairwell. Okay. Move there and take the hide action. Okay. Take the roll me a stealth check. Um, you should still have passed without trace on. I don't think it's been an hour. So you yeah. can add a ten to this, and. So that'll be a 31. 31. You feel extremely well hidden. I can't even see you. Yeah. <laughs> nice. He's right behind me and I don't know where he is. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's your turn. You 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 swear you saw Redman like coming your way, but now what where the hell is he? Where is he? Fine, I'll go fight him myself, I guess. Uh quick question. Parker, do you have advantage on initiative? Did you use it? Okay, double check it. Okay, Yas is going to go into a rage because he loves going into a rage. He's going to stand between both swarms and I will attack the left swarm not recklessly. Okay. <laughs> Good call. I, I feel like that would be a very poor decision right now. You're learning, Yas. <laughs> Maybe a reckless thing to do. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, uh rage do, does not add plus two to on hit or to hit, right? It's just, just damage. Two. Just damage. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. My window just randomly. There we go. Okay. So then it's a plus. What is it? Eight. Where did my stuff just go? What is going on? Okay. I see what happened, and I don't like it. Uh, quick side note, David. Yep. The Spirit Both Guardians nine. does not drop the death word that Zelrick has. Right. Yeah. Just wanted to clarify that. Yes. Shield of Faith. Can you guys hear this dog snoring? No. no. It's Shield. so bad. <laughs> okay. 24 hits. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll the next one to hit as well. Okay. Uh, 13 does not hit. I'm not surprised. Okay. God, he's so loud. This dog is so loud. Holy shit. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Okay. 17 damage to the left swarm, and it has disadvantage attacking anybody but myself. Okay. And that is uh, bludgeoning damage. I believe so. Okay. It sure is. Um, my yeah, Firefox it's, it's... tab randomly decided to split into two completely separate tabs. Oh, weird. Um, I'm, I'm uh, going to close roll 20 real quick and reopen it on the other tab. Okay. Uh, let's put Rage on you. And uh, yes, it, you smash these things with your, uh, with your maul. Um, and they are hard shell, right? They are like metal, worked metal shell, mm -hmm. and uh, they <laughs> appear to take eight of that damage. Ah, fuck. So. Okay, Atalantis, you're up. Okay, Redman, did you just move? Oh. He posted in the chat. Yeah. Oh, just so, yeah, he, he, that's fine. Oh, so he's not really in my way, right? Correct. Okay. So I can hit this one. 
Uh, Without... Yes, these are big enough. I mean, these are huge like, swarms of these like beetles. So could I hit so... this one? Yep. Yeah, neither is going to have cover because of their size. Okay. So I'm going to Dragon's Wrath Longbow. Okay. Oh, wait. It's not going to roll, right? No, it did not roll. No. Okay. So... Twenty-two hits. Oh, my! That didn't roll either. Hold on. Uh, and I will let you know now. And I, I promise, I promise, I promise, this is stopping soon. Uh, you don't have to worry about rolling the poison damage on these things. Uh, okay. <laughs> because they are constructs. Um. <laughs> You keep promising me. I, I know, I know, but <laughs> make it through here and... Oh, have... Addy is Avenger, everything is going to be vulnerable to poison damage. <laughs> Addy is going to retire before One. she does poison damage. One! What? No, that's what the poison. One plus... Uh, that's a no, dagger. No, no, yeah, no, no, so your longbow does d8 plus something piercing. Oh, damage. plus five. So, okay, so six, six, and it takes half of that. And then she's going to do it again, because that's really all I got. Okay. <laughs> that is a great... Uh, roll us 2d8, and we'll add 5 to it. Boom, 17. So it she added five or... Oh, I did the 5. Oh, you did the 5, 12. Okay, so it will take 6 of that. That's a really sad crit, but okay. It is a really sad crit, I'm sorry. And then I'm going to bonus action swarm them. Okay. Swarm, swarm. And it will take all of that as your swarms come in and just start stomping on some of these beetles that have been knocked down by your arrows, crushing them. Okay, very good. Uh, are you moving anywhere? No, I'm going to stay where I'm at. Okay. All right, Liz Bob. Greg, you got that sound bite for me? <laughs> sure do. Give me just a second. Lizbeth goes into a rage, but it's not like a rage. It's more like just like wanting to protect her friends. Not as mad as much as it is just like fierce protection. Okay. That sounds mad. <laughs> it's German it's Shepherd down, mode. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to dart around Zelda and go for this swarm. Now, okay, the swarm is not big enough like to grapple and throw, is it? Uh, it cannot be grappled, right? Because it is a swarm, right? It's so it's a I, swarm of individual things. So you couldn't, yeah. I couldn't do that throw thing. Not on okay. these guys, yeah. Well, we'll just unarm strike it. Okay. Nineteen hits. Okay. Oh, okay. Just... So I got two attacks. So those yeah. are two attacks. Yeah, so that's a hit and a crit. Uh, and I add three for my rage, and my normal attack is plus three, so it's going to be plus six. Are you telling yeah. me that Lizbob just crit and got to use Brutal Critical in her first combat? <laughs> nope. Um, I don't think she has that yet. I think Brutal Critical is your level sure. nine. Yeah. You should have it. Oh, so what? What's so you your damage? Those. Your oh, damage die. Your damage die for your unarmed strikes is a, a d12. D12. So roll us three, three d12. 
three d12 four d12 rolls four d12 plus six four okay well here's the first attack because so one two yeah one for the first one this yeah. One for the second oh, one. It's oh, okay. The so total one, damage between both those attacks. Yes, both attacks will be. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yes, it should be four. Yeah, it's one d twelve. One d twelve plus six for the first attack. Two oh, d6. I see. So it and should then, be three d six for the second. And then three d twelve plus six for the second three, attack. Yeah. Yes. God damn. Okay. Don't get that plus six. Or does he? Yeah, yeah it would be a different attack. Different attack. Right. Yeah. Okay. Bring so, the okay. so 35 it's been a minute. bludgeoning and it takes 17 of that. Oops. Hold oh on. No, 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 no. I, I did it wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, that was 100. Dude. There we go. It takes 17 of that as you are um, just like punching beetles, grabbing like some of these tiny little beetles, crushing them in your, in your paws and just going to town on this thing. Mm -hmm. these things okay and he's very right. proud. it is their turn uh this one moves up into yas's and liz bob's space don't and they take guardians. yeah yes they do i'm sorry they need to make uh what kind of saves double wisdom saving through a seven and an 18. Seven fails, 18 passes. Okay, roll us some damage. Okie dokie. Their speed is also halved, by the way. Thank you. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure if they take half damage or not on a fail. Or on a succeed. They should. Okay, they, they think they do, yeah. Okay, it's not rolling my spells, but it's rolling Zelrix. That's annoying. <laughs> so 5d8. Let's see, there's the d8. Oops, rolled that one on accident. There we go. 20. There's the this one takes 20 damage. This one takes 10 damage. Boom. Sick. All right, as your your spectral constructs are battling these very much real constructs, uh, this one yes comes in and they start swarming around Yas and Lizbub. Um, who do they attack? They attack Yas, uh, and they just swarm and they try to to bite you with a ten to hit. No, sir. That will do it. This one can move 25. And let's see. 25. It can get right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, well, Zephyr, no, Zephyr is the source of all this stuff, you know, of these things. So it, it's going to go for Zephyr. Uh, for your plus your two. And that's an 11 to hit. Miss. Okay. Bom, bom. That's the end of their turns. Zelric, bottom of the round. What do you do? Yeah. Okay. One. Um, I will approach the portal rift. What I'm call it. Um, and I will take my turn to peer into it. Okay. okay. Um, peering I'm... into it, you see. The same, that just kind of like pure astral sea. Uh, and then you remember the prism that you have in your pocket. I, I will take that out and then okay. channel through it. Okay, as you kind of hold it up and channel through it, you see a younger version of yourself. You see Alara and you see Lyra. Um, just tumbling like through this void right you see you see the younger version of yourself like trying to to kind of like claw his way back almost toward you right and you see uh alara and lyra like just tumbling kind of out into the void you see the younger version of yourself trying to reach out for them as they pass 
but but unable to to get a hold of them, and they tumble away. Um, as you look through the prism, you see a landscape begin to materialize. Um, you see Alara and Lyra standing in the grass in this landscape, uh, the, this field of brown grass. You see other figures materialize around them. Um, men in bronze armor and kind of strange helmets, uh, they are battling this huge creature with multiple snake-like heads. Um, you see Alara and Lyra kind of come to regain their senses, like see their surroundings, see what's going on. And uh, Alara, you know, grabs Lyra and picks her up um, so that they can flee. Um, a couple of moments after they flee, you see one of these armored men who was fighting this creature notice them and begin to follow. You see this scene. Mm. Is that Pantheon? That is what you see on your turn. Um, I didn't mean, I meant to note, I'm sorry, Zalric, uh, your reactions are, will generally still be available to you, right? So okay, cool. It's cool, cool, cool. what you do with your turn, but your reactions should be available should you need them. Okay. Okay. Zephyr, that brings us back to you. You see Zelric behind you, uh, looking through his prism into this rift. While he is focusing on that, I'm going to cast Bonkus with my hammer on the form in front of me. Okay. Let me do something real quick that I forgot to do. Sorry. Uh, what was that roll? Um, I have to switch it over every time for these different things. Sorry, I'm, I forgot to do something, so I'm... You're good. Drawing something in. Oof, that's a six. Ha! A six will not hit. Um, any bonus actions or... movement no i'm a i'm gonna stay where i'm at someone needs to try and keep the front line formed so that way zelric can stay focused on the portal in front of us or behind okay. me okay so that's it all right look in here okay um redmond all right behind you up oh. oh, first behind you another one of these shimmering Rift appears on the wall in the stairwell. Adelandis, you see this as well. And running out from it are two clockwork creatures that look like this, skittering across the floor on their multiple metal legs, uh, their tails sparking with electricity. I will put them on the map. Um... <clears throat> Kind of cute. Yeah, they are kind of cute. Oh, I love their name. Yeah, they're called Skitter Widgets. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good name. Uh, one of them is going to run out for Atalantis, and one Redman, now that it can see you, is going to run for you, even though you're kind of blurry. So, Atalantis first. This thing runs up and tries to bite you. Uh, it's a 14 to hit with its nope. bite. Okay. And then it tries to zap you with its tail for a 10 to hit. Definitely not. Okay. And you bring that bow down and just smack that tail away. Redmond, these, I believe, are all at disadvantage, right? Because you're blurred. They, oh. Forgot <clears throat> what this actually does. Blur. Fun. <laughs> You become blurred, <laughs> shifting and wavering. Uh, disadvantage attack rolls against you, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, what's your armor class? Cause... An, an attacker <laughs> immune to this effect doesn't rely on sight. If it doesn't rely it, on sight. It does rely on sight, okay. so 
uh, the, its attacks were made with with disadvantage. Um, what's, what's your AC? Because it's lower uh, than most. It is a fifteen. It will hit twice. The it rolled a twenty, an eighteen, a twenty, and a nineteen on its four rolls. Ooh, uh, so with its <laughs> bite, um, it's going to chomp on you for six piercing damage. And I need a dexterity save to try not to be grappled in its jaws. Dex. Yep. Oh, it just rolled over. Oh, God. The DC was 13. You are grappled in its jaws. Uh, let's see. There's a... Do that. Um, and then with its tail, it zaps you for four piercing damage and 14 lightning damage. Uh, so 18? 18, and then I will need uh, two constitution saves to see if you are still blurred. That one is good. That one is good. Okay, you are still blurred. You focus on on your blurriness, and you're still good. That is their turn. That's what they do. Yas, you're up. You got these things. Now it's my turn. It skipped. It reordered oh, no. somehow. Oh, it did reorder. Oh, sorry. Let me give you an eighteen point one. That's that's why. Come on. It didn't even do alphabetical either. No, oh, that's weird. That's Okay, Redmond, it is your turn. <laughs> All right, well, there goes my plan. Um, I'm going to do something stupid. <laughs> we love to hear that. While I'm grappled, yeah. um, I can still attack within five feet of me. You can, yes. If you want to try to escape the grapple, it takes your action. Right. But you can, if you're fine with being grappled, it does not... Grapple alone does not impose disadvantage. It just sets your speed to zero. Right. Yeah. Okay. Then I would like to... Since I can't move, I can do something called... Uh, make it steady aim. Mm-hmm. It was a bonus action. It's a yeah. bonus action. Give yourself advantage on your next attack roll. Uh, so I'm going to steady aim. Give myself advantage uh, on this one right here. Okay. And I will use my uh, short sword. Nine lives short sword. Okay. Plus nine to hit. Here we go. Come on. Twenty-two hits. All right. So roll all that sneak attack damage as well. So I get five uh, D. So it's sixty-six plus five. Yep. Okay. Twenty-two. Boom! It takes all that as you uh, yes stab and drag that dagger um, through You see, like, exposed circuits uh, and wires from uh, from your dagger slash. And it does not react as if it um, is pained by this, right? That is bonus action and action, and I can't move, so that's my turn. Okay. All right. Solid damage on your turn. Yas, you're up. Well, kind of stuck between the rock and a hard place. I'm, I'll bump myself up one space, trying to get out of the cloud. Okay. And okay. I will attack the one. Um, I'm just gonna try to finish the one that's attacking Zephyr off. Good call. Okay. Okay. D twenty plus nine. Uh, again, not reckless on this one. 
Uh, uh, that does not hit. Man, I rely on reckless. Let's try again. <laughs> that definitely oh, wow, hits. if I'd done reckless. <laughs> okay. Hey, Piper, do not start a fight, please. I don't need a dog fight going on right now. 2d6 plus 7. Sorry, I'm. I also don't have a mouse, so I'm very slow right now. Fifteen damage. So it doesn't either. Take seven. It will take seven. Uh, but you see, at this point, only like a few of the beetles in this swarm are still up. Right? There are a lot of lots of like crunchy metal parts on the floor. Um, only a few beetles in the swarm are still swirling around. You're not my friend. That's all I got. Okay. okay. Adelandis, you're up. You've got one of these things in your face that you were able to keep at bay with your with your bow. I do. And I should attack it, but I'm not going to. Okay. I'm going to go for this one by Zephyr that's approaching Zelvert, too. Okay. I don't think that's stupid. You promised us something stupid. Well, I mean, yeah, the guy's I'm, I'm on me, and I know he can grapple you in his so, mouth. So, I mean, um, <laughs> probably not so the this, These will be a disadvantage, because you have an enemy within five feet of you. But you have also seen these things are not that tough to hit, despite Yas missing twice. Those were just really bad rolls. Okay, so here's my two d20s. Okay. Hey! Sorry, dogs are stopping each other. Oh, yeah, a four plus eleven, so fifteen. Fifteen hits. Okay. So that is all I'm saying okay. is you didn't start the sentence with I pull out a blanket. Um, you, I didn't, you're right. <laughs> uh and you Get your bow. You are, this thing is snapping at your ankles next to you, right? But you focus. Um, you wait until like the remaining three beetles are all going to come in a line. You let that arrow go. Thunk, thunk, thunk. Boom. All three beetles are gone. And that was the one I was using for my initiative tracker. So hold on. Uh, these guys were where? They were. Before Zelric, they were at a 16. Yeah, they were between me and Zelric. Yeah, okay. at 16. So there we go. So then, okay. as a bonus action before I use my last attack, mm -hmm. I'm going to use my swarm to move me five feet without nice. an opportunity attack. Very nice. So they're going to move me here. Okay. And then I'm going to take my movement like here all right and then i'm going to attack this one okay uh this one down here okay great the skitter widget yeah so and i don't have disadvantage now right you do not have disadvantage um these are also yeah. constructs so again i'm sorry i know you don't, you don't have to worry about the poison oh it's supposed to be a plus 11 not a plus five uh so four plus 11 is 15 uh that will clink off of this thing and not damage it as a miss okay these these appear to be like very well constructed and armored okay that's my turn okay good turn took out one of the swarms uh liz bob right wait hold on yeah so yep. Liz, liz bob yep yeah uh liz bob seen that avalanche is being attacked and something is over there Okay. Is going to throw caution to the wind and try to go that way and take any opportunity to attack that you're going to get. All right. That's a 19 to hit. Does not hit. Damn, girl. <laughs> All right. Uh, no? <laughs> you uh, you just hold that shield up behind you, you know, kind of over your head and, and run like right through it. Uh, beetles clinking off and you make it through the swarm. Um, And she turns the corner and she sees that one, but she also sees that. Redmond is grappled by the other one? Yes. Okay. This blurry cat just... Yeah. She's 
She's going to take this one, mm -hmm. and she's going to attempt to throw it at that one. Okay, so... So I need to know how those mechanics work. Yeah, yeah let's uh, look up Liz Bob's character it's sheet. Improvised weapon, I think? Yes. It is, but I think you might have to... You have to grapple to or hit it first, but I think... Yeah. With your thing, if you hit it, you can use you get like a free grapple attempt. Like if I unarm strike it. Yeah, let's see. Root strength. Once on your turn, when you hit a creature within five feet of you with a melee weapon attack, you can try to grapple or shove that creature as part of the same attack. So on your first attack, if you hit with a punch, you can make a free grapple attempt. Cool. And then for your second attack, I can throw it. You can try to throw it at the other thing. Yeah. Okay. We're going to do that. All right. I think you can try to throw it at the other thing. Do you have that yet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can, I can throw a creature. Adaptable combat. There it is. Yep. Uh, yes. So a 25 hits. So roll damage. And uh, then make an athletics check. So 11, it takes 11. And uh, 18, it will defend with dex. And you have grappled it. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so Liz Bob just comes up, she grabs it, and she's going to throw it at the other skitter widget that is holding Redmond. OK, all right. So uh, that will be a disadvantage because it's 15 feet away. Your range is 10, 20. So the throw will be a disadvantage. Once I grapple it, can I move? Because I still have some movement. Yep. Yeah, so I want to move into the space that it's occupying. OK, we'll and you guys. That way I can throw it 10 feet. Absolutely. Like she like lunges forward to throw it. OK. And, uh, so. Twenty-one. Twenty-one hits. So the grappled creature will take damage equal to your strength mod plus your proficiency bonus. So it will take seven. The one that hits, boom, over here. And the other one will take the uh, the other one will take your yeah, like your one to twelve plus whatever. Um, will not get your rage damage because it's not a melee attack. Okay. But there you go. 12 to them. Boom! All and right. Then, as a bonus action, as a bonus action, is the one that I throw, is the one that I threw prone now, or? That, How does that is work? a great question. Uh, give me just a second and find this again. So you hit another creature. I, I'm gonna say no for now, just to keep things moving because I don't see it in the rules. But I will find an answer to that. Yeah. That's fine. Um, um, can I shield master of it to knock it from? Yeah. I want to actually... Yeah. Make another uh, athletics check. Uh, and you, you tie goes to the shover. Fifteen versus fifteen, and you knock this thing onto its back. And where's the little? It's prone. Yes. Nice. Good job. Okay, Liz. Yeah. What's I don't know what's going on back there, but are it sounds really cool. Are you okay? I yeah. said, "Good job, Liz Bob." <laughs> All right. Uh, it's the Beatles' turn, and they need to make a wisdom save. Correct. They need to make a wisdom save. That's a 10. Roll us some damage. That is a failure. It is. They're not very wise. Do 40 damage. Just do it. Whatever the fuck. 
Guess, I will give you one guess how many hit points they have left. 26. 25. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> and uh, these, yeah, they are just seared by this magic. Uh, they begin like shorting out and they just collapse to the ground. All right. Liquid hot magma. Uh, that's them. That is That brings us to Zelric. Zelric, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to use my turn to peer through the portal. Keep peering okay. through. Zelric peers through the portal. Um, you see the scene shift to the portal. You see Alara and Lyra in a cage. And this cage is moving. The cage is affixed to the rear of a small vehicle, um, a two-wheeled vehicle that is being pulled by one horse. And uh, the cage is kind of affixed as like a trailer to that vehicle. Um, you see the armored man who followed them as they fled from that creature before. He is driving the chariot. Um, you see him driving this chariot. Oh, well, I called it a chariot. I was supposed to say okay. <laughs> Uh, you see him driving this vehicle through the gates of a walled city. Um, and you see the city situated on the top of a precipitous cliff. This is what the city looks like that you can see him driving through. That is what you can see on this turn. But okay, give me one second. Uh, I one thing before the end of my turn. Am I Absolutely. able to? Uh, this might be too much for just like an object interaction, but can I take out the one of magic missiles and like toss it towards Zephyr? Um, if it's sure. too much, then I'm, I can just take it out and have it. Or if I'm using both hands to like you hold the prism or something, then it's totally fine if it's. I mean, si like, yeah. Since you're right next to him, I think that's yeah, that's fine. You can okay. You can just kind of like you're looking through. Mm -hmm. You're kind of like no look, no look pass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Zephyr can can take it if he wants as a as a free reaction right now. Sure, I'll grab okay. the magic man Gatling gun. Okay. Um, and I'll tell you, and I'll say the uh. Magic word is Sidus. It means constellation in Latin. Oh, that's, that's nice. Fun little tidbit. Okay. <laughs> uh, that brings book, us man. to the next round where. Oops. On this round, hey, cool. <laughs> you see uh, another one of these rifts open oh, um, on the north wall there. And you see pouring through. Uh, that guy's going to be unlucky. This guy's going to be unlucky. Stick him there. Oops. And this guy's going to be lucky. And let me let you see them. Uh, you see... They look like this... banana peels. They do. <laughs> uh, you see this figure uh, come through. Oh. Looks like a, a steamwork, animated like steamwork set of armor uh, with this, this great sword. Uh, and he comes through and, and kneels down. Um, and in this mechanical, vo mechanical voice in, in a language that you you don't understand, unless Zelric has comprehend languages. Up. Oh, that's for written, isn't it? Um, let me double check. Um, I understand the literal meaning of any spoken language that I hear. Spoken language. I, okay. may, I may not know what he's saying, but I can get 
a vibe off of what <laughs> if he's mad or something, I guess. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you hear in this kind of series of like clicks and whirs, right? Uh, that's what you hear, but it, the literal meaning that you hear is um, inevitable, we prepare the way, we will subdue the deviant. We await your arrival. Oh, man. And then he stands. And he is flanked uh, by two of these floating, um, I don't know, floating kind of uh, beings of like energy, right? Like light energy that are, are hovering and look like the second handout that I just gave you. Um, and on their turns, the ones that are unlucky enough to be in Spirit Guardians will do what they have to do. But that brings us to Zephyr. Oh. So I'm going to go ahead and use my movement and go 10 feet right here. Okay. To try and be a barrier between Zelric and the newly formed enemies. Okay. And I will go ahead and try. Uh, as you enter as as you enter the space next to this okay. guy, he swings his sword at you <laughs> as uh, as a reaction. Okay. Uh, that is a 26 to hit. Uh, I'll allow it. Okay. <laughs> uh, I would like to spirit shield, uh, Zephyr. Okay. It's... All right. Oh, yeah. So, whatever damage is reduced by eight. Okay, Zephyr, you take three slashing damage. Okay. And I need a concentration save. Inspiration. Oh, no. oh, no. of course. No! Oh, my God. Oh. And wait, your spirit I, guardians. Wait, 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 wait. I have my reactions, right? Yeah, you, you do. Reactions. Colonel shift it. Reroll again. <laughs> okay. This is like timeception. Yeah. Now you see. Okay. And uh, you keep your spirit guardians. <laughs> Woo! Uh, oh, yeah. Um, as you're just grazed by this uh, by this sword. Okay. Uh, and now you may continue your turn. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put my mace away mm -hmm. and cast inflict wounds as I grab onto this lantern arch on above me. Okay. Roll us an attack. That's a natural one. Again. Oh, and that will miss. Funny. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm going to have to ask you to do better. I'm trying. <laughs> Any bonus actions ever? <laughs> All I'm doing. Okay. Uh, let's get a radius on these guys. I think everyone's within 20 feet. Yep. Um, everyone, please roll me a wisdom saving throw as these, as these uh, beings come through and are almost like terrifying in their awesomeness like in the biblical sense right when like an angel shows up and people are all freaked out by him it's kind of that 15 there, seven, eight, seven eight and six i'm gonna i'm gonna use a luck roll on that okay that's much better that is much better uh Liz Bob Bob and adelandis uh you guys you are frightened of these things so frightened. Why can I not? Mm -hmm. get out of frightened? Uh, What's up? How do we get out of frightened? Uh, you, I believe, will. You are frightened until the start of your next turn. So, it, um, you are not frightened for very long. Yeah. Oh no, sorry. You are frightened until the start of these things next turn. Yes. Okay. And the lamp turns. So, the lanterns next turn. Yes. Would my um, spirit guardians have gone off before that happened? Uh, yes. 
And you see these lanterns take no impact from that radiant damage. Yeah. Damn. I know. Four or um, it is, it is now they get to do their things. So, where are these? Um, this one is right here, and it goes for Zelric. It kind of swoops over. Oh God, you stupid little thing. Be small. No, nope, I'm just gonna make them big because it's too annoying to deal with them. They cast enlarge. <laughs> yeah, they 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 expand by the radiant damage just makes them bigger so they're more convenient to move on a grid. And uh Zelric this thing tries to, uh this thing launches out two beams of radiant energy toward you. That is a crit and then a 19. They both hit. They both hit. It is a total of 16 radiant damage. <laughs> Um, let's see, Lizbob, you're right there. Uh, this one shoots out two beams toward you. Uh, that's a nat one and a 19. You're fine. Wow. That's the end of their turn. We are up, we are back to these skitter widgets. Uh, this one is going to stand up. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, and it's going to take revenge on Lisbon if it can. Uh, what? It's going to try to what? bite you. Rolling a lot of 19s against Lisbon. That's getting a little annoying. And it's going to try to zap you with its tail for a 21. That hits. So, uh, yeah. Lisbon, that is two piercing. That's accounting for your resistance. Okay. Nine lightning. And okay. a constitution saving throw as this is you're zapped by this lightning tail. Eighteen. Eighteen? Okay. You are good. Um Redman, because of your blur, this one uh just cannot hit you with either its bite or its tail. Good. So good uh good use of blur, and now it's your turn. Redman. Um, did he happen to drop me after he got whacked by his buddy? He did not. He's still got you in, uh, his, in his jaws. Yep. So. I am going to um, <coughs> uh, steady aim again against this thing again. Okay. With my nine lives short sword. All right. And that is a D20 plus nine. Nine. Yes. Mm hmm. Henry. That's good. Roll again. See if you crit. Nope. But 26 definitely hits. Okay, that is, uh, what did I say? 66 plus 5? 66 plus 5, yeah. Well, this one's just, like, got its chompers around your ankle. Your... Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Boom! Uh, dagger goes right through this thing's metallic skull. Uh, you pull it out, you've got, you know, like, wires and gears flying out of its head as your dagger comes out. And it's amazing it's still moving around, but but it is. Uh, but it looks, I mean, you could just see, like, shorts, you know, start to spark, like, all around its body. Yeah. All right, sweet deal. And that's, uh, um, I'm going to say a little something, too. Um, I'll just tell Lizbob to finish that one off, and we'll focus on the next. And then that's I all got right. it. <laughs> all right. Yas, you hear, you can see some of it, but you hear a lot of clinking and clanking and yelling and uh, from the stairs. And then you also see these just uh, uh, brilliant beings of light 
Uh, and this uh, it's kind of steampunk guy right here. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I thought those little floaty dudes were really cute until I recognized the shape of a face within it. So they're not Whoa. cute. Yeah. Whoa, I never noticed that. That is... Yeah, creepy. they were cute up until that exact moment. Oh, cool. Yeah. Like a face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yes. I don't particularly love what I'm seeing, but I'm going to step up to this one. And it's time to be reckless, I think. Okay. And then you're going to so. back up before the end of your turn, right? No. <laughs> you, can, you can go around me. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. Right, so First, reckless. I'm going to do these separately for the advantage. Okay. Oh, that makes it sad. Well. Unnatural 20 and a 27. Those will both hit. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do all the attack rolls and get them out of the way. Okay. And a uh, 22. 27 hits and a 22 hits. Cuckoo. Let's see here. Two. E6. This. Seven. First damage is 14 bludgeoning. Second is 18. 18. So green and, total of 30. Uh, this thing is like flickering as it as it hovers, right? Uh the light is is beginning to go out, but it's still it's still up there and moving. Well, he now has disadvantage attacking anyone else. That's that's okay. all I got, folks. That's all I got. All right. Let's uh Spanish. Boom. Atalantis, you're up. So, Atalantis is going to back up to, like, here, I guess. Okay. Shoot through the portal. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm going to go for this one. Okay. That is a dead thing. <laughs> uh, arrow goes through, and that face um, starts to come together, and it just explodes, and this light goes out. And then I'm going to move a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to aim for this guy. Okay. I will let you know something. Uh, you, it, this thing also, the light thing seemed to be affected by your poison in your, in your. Oh. Uh, so if that changes anything, I will just let you know that. Can I hit that guy from where I am? This guy? He will have half cover. Okay. Uh, but that's only a plus two. So. Okay. Yeah, well, and, I've seen you hit this. Uh, if we use that 16, that hits. Okay. Uh, we use that 16. So. Okay, so then... For 11 damage. Okay, uh, and you can roll your poison damage, too. Oh, plus 2d6. Yeah. Another four. Okay. Any bonus action? And then I'm going to swarm him. Nice. Another three. Another three. Okay. Atalantis snipes one of these things. Uh, does a cool roll. Stands up over here and shoots her right over the shoulder of this guy. And... Uh, Hits the other one pretty good as well. All right. List Bob, you are up, surrounded a little bit, but very angry. You're also still scared of this. I'm going to turn my back to it because uh, okay. Redmond did say finish off this guy, and Liz Bob's okay. a good girl. All right. And she's going to recklessly go after this guy. Reckless. Reckless. Let's uh, give you a. 
both angry oh. eyes for Reckless. Okay, so this will be a straight roll against him. Because uh, Reckless will cancel out a 20 hits. Oh, well, we're going to grapple him with this. Okay. Well, roll your damage first. Yeah, I'll do the damage first. Yeah. Um, Seven. Okay. And they can make a grapple check. Oh, yeah. That's athletics, right? Athletics, yep. Uh, you beat an 18. He is Ooh. grappled. Now, I don't have to throw him. I can use him as a weapon. You can. So I grab him, and I swing him over my head and hit that lantern arch with him. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, so make that attack roll a straight roll. Yeah, it'll be another straight roll. Can Tom and Jerry A 19 hits. So this guy takes oh. seven damage and roll your damage against the Lantern Archon. And since this is a melee attack, I get the rage damage to it. You do. Oh. Man. Each fall is not rolling like. I mean, that's pretty good still. You know, I mean, makes one and a two. Yeah, having uh, two D6s oh, is kind of nice. Yeah, it makes it more like even. <laughs> Yeah, yeah more consistent. Risk. Yeah. Um, okay, that's pretty awesome. You grabbed this thing and beat yeah, a I'm still, still holding on to with it. it. Yeah. By its tail or whatever. Yep. Okay. Any movement? Um. You could really only go down the stairs because you're frightened of this thing. So that'd be the only way you could go. You can't get any closer to the. The lantern. Yeah, I think I would just stand still with Redman here. Okay. All right, Zelric, it's your turn. Um, do I feel like mm. I need to like stand in this spot, particularly since I started focusing? Because I like feel like I can move. Just I have um, to be like within around like the portal, or you, you? I mean, you can probably you can see into the portal really anywhere in this room. You know, if you have a clear view of it, you can you can see into it uh, with the prism. So, yeah. Um, and just so I can try to make some space, I'm gonna move um, to the other side just to get a okay. little bit of wiggle room, and I will again use my turn to. Okay. You look in, you hold up the prism, you see Alara and Lyra walking through this city that you saw at last turn. Uh, you see Alara wearing a gold armband um, in the shape of a snake, kind of coiled all the way up her arm. Uh, it's very pretty. You see them stopping in an open air market in the city where Alara appears to buy a basket of olives and a jug of wine from a vendor in this market. Uh, the vendor wears a loose, some kind of loose white wool garment uh, draped over his shoulders, you know, and around his body. Um, behind them, rising above this market, is a colossal bronze statue of a soldier in similar armor and dress uh, as you saw earlier on the men fighting that creature in the field um, and on the men you saw driving the chariot. You see, this is what that colossal statue looks like. Oops. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is uh, this buddy's? Oh, sorry. Anything else? Um, I think that's it. Okay. Uh, it is this guy's turn here. He's got to make himself a saving throw. Correct. And he gets a thirteen, Zephyr. That's a fail. <laughs> 
29. 29. Monstrous. Whoa. <laughs> uh, and his speed is how? Let's see. Correct. Um, he drags his sword across the floor and then whips it in this great arc. Uh, and this attack will affect Zephyr, Redman, and Lizbob are the ones within 10 feet of him. I need a dexterity saving throw from each of you, Zephyr, Redman, and Lizbob. I'm not going uh, to... Is this an effect that I can see? Yes, it is. I, I get advantage on this throw. Okay. Redman would like to use his inspiration. Okay. Good idea. And do I take half side half damage on a success? Yes. I take no damage. Really? Oh, because your shield. My shield. Yeah. Same, Does that same take... Yeah. Does that take your reaction <laughs> to do that? Or, uh, or no? Yeah, I think okay. so. Let me double check. Okay. Let me roll this damage because so Greg and Lisboff, Greg and Lisboff, Redman and Lisboff will take none. So they completely dodge out of the way. Zephyr will take 32 slashing damage as he just whips this great sword right through you. We take these. What's that? I said we take these. We take these, yeah. And, uh, uh, and yes, I did, I did use my reaction in order to take no damage. Okay. All right. Good to know. Um, and then we'll need a concentration check from Zephyr. 14, you needed a, oh wait, 16. Yeah, you needed a 16, right? It's half of the, the damage. And that Spirit Guardians will drop. That's okay. Got a lot of work out of that Spirit Guardians. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, if you get like two or toys. three rounds out of a Spirit Guardians, that's it's definitely worth the spell. Um. Okay, that is his turn. That is his action. Um. And he, that's all he's gonna. Well, and then he will start marching over here. Uh, that's where he will stop. That brings us to the next round. So give me just a second. Oh my god. What? What? So there's gonna be more. There's there's gonna be more. Delric, have you seen what you needed to see yet? Uh I've gotten a lot. <laughs> You see from the game. You see from uh, this rift down here. You see this sphere of metal uh, with multiple oh, no. long Ooh, knives no. for legs. Um, as it moves, like it just you know kind of rolls over like these these legs uh, with these knives on them, like you know clanking down, and it rolls. Yeah, sure out of this rift. Okay. Uh, but it's not his turn yet. So we are back to Zephyr. Um, we love concentration. I will pull out the brazier and yell Ignis. Hell yeah. All right, I'll just grab a fire elemental for you. Oh, fuck yeah, I forgot all about this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Bring up the concentration again, baby. Yep. <laughs> all right. Uh, where do you want to stick it? Is there like a certain area that um? Um, I'm, oh, he's, he's a large Sorry. elemental, so that's what a uh, 10 foot big token right yep yeah 
Let me see if I can give you control of him. I cannot, because I got him from the compendium. But you just tell me where you want him to go. Right there, right on top of the Templar. Right on top of the Templar? <laughs> okay. Yeah, centralized right there, so that way Zora can still see into the portal, hopefully. Yeah, that's... Uh... Probably, like, there for Zora to still see in the portal. There that's or fine. there. Um, okay. over... Right there, yeah. Okay. And can he occupy... I should pull up a fire elemental. So, yeah. He is fire form. The elemental can move through his space as narrow as one inch wide without squeezing a creature that touches the elemental or hits it with a melee attack on five feet. It takes 1d10 damage. Additionally, the elemental can enter hostile creature space and stop there. And stop First there. Time okay. It enters the creature's space. On a turn, that creature takes 1d10 fire damage and catches on fire until someone takes an action to douse the fire. All right. So I'm just moving on here real quick. We will make this guy on fire. Oop. And he takes a d10. Do you want to roll us a d10 for damage? Yes, sir. One. <laughs> One fire damage, okay. But he is on fire until he, he takes his action to put it out. On fire. And you are concentrating on keeping this elemental here. Correct. Okay. Very cool. And then does it share initiative with me? Uh, it is the... what it, The brazier, it says, is if you cast what spell? Uh, the brazier says, while a fire burns in the brass brazier, you can use an action to speak the brazier's command word and summon a fire elemental as if you had cast the conjure elemental spell. Conjure elemental... Let's pull that up. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. If fire elemental emerges. I right, roll initiative for the elemental. Roll initiative for it. Okay. It obeys verbal commands that I give it. So, does its stat block have anything in the. Uh, way? Yeah, I'll, I'll roll it for it. Sorry, I have its stat block up. I could just do it right from the thing. I, I have it up to you. Okay, uh, I got an eight. Okay. So we'll reorder this. But um, he definitely starts his turn there and catches the guy on fire immediately. So that has happened. So okay. does that classify as me casting a spell even though I used the item? As if yeah. you had cast... Let's see, call forth, choose an add. I think yes. I guess it says as if you had cast. I think that okay. applies all the, you know. And that is fair with me. Okay. I think I'm going to do the smart maneuver and use my bonus action to go ahead and use a basic potion. Okay. That does sound less. So 2d4 plus 2, that's 6 healing. 6 healing, okay. Take that. Which is a lot better than what it could have turned out to. Yeah. And I'll end my turn. Okay. Uh, this guy here is going to... Teleport over here, which takes uh, one of his attacks, essentially, and he will use his other one to try to blast the Zephyr. By Zephyr, I meant Zelric. Sorry. Uh, it's a 12 to hit. <laughs> uh, that misses. Okay. And so it ducks under this this uh, blast of light. Back to our little skittery friend. And Avalon is no longer frightened, right? You and Adelanus are no longer framed. Yes, thank you. Get that out. All right. Uh, this Skitter Widget is going to try to make a last stand against you, Lizbob, uh, while you're grabbing onto it. It tries to bite you with advantage. It's a 24 to hit. That hits. 13 piercing. 
And halved? Or no? Yeah, uh, halved. Yeah, sorry. So six. And you are <laughs> you are grappling each other. <laughs> you, uh, you are locked in combat here, and both of your speeds are zero. Yeah. Uh, you're like whole it's it's like chomping on your foot and you're and you're trying to let you're like grabbing onto its body and then it tries to bring that tail and zap you and that okay. is a critical hit uh i'm immune to it it's my armor okay but and it hits me but it's it hits not you. Hit yeah okay uh so let's see that's two piercing that's already cut in half and 11 lightning and I need a constitution save. Fifteen. Fifteen is just enough. Okay. <laughs> uh Redman. <laughs> your your blur is super, super useful. You are Saving yourself a lot of hits in that blur of this combat. You are missed twice again. Excellent. My turn? turn. Uh, no. The big boy, the big rolly boy who just oh, came in. That sounds like it is his turn. Uh, let's find him. 30 foot cone. I think that's a good thing to do. Oh, no. I think the opposite. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, no. uh. Yes, kill your ally. Yeah. Um Do it. This is the most efficient way because he only gets one of his allies. If he goes the other way, he's gonna get both. So this will be a deck save from Yas Zelric. Zephyr, the Elemental, and the uh, Templar guy. And this is an I, effect I can see? Yes, it is. Sorry. It, it uh, opens a little slot in this uh, in the in the sphere, and sh a cone of shrapnel fires across the whole room. Uh, remind me how to do advantage on here. Uh, if you right-click uh, the save, it'll say... Oh, wait, you're on... On the, oh, and run twenty. I have no idea. Well, no, no, no. I'm I'm on D and D Beyond because it oh, seems like it's working for right, everyone else. Then, oh. then right click I, yeah. where the plus two is or plus whatever your dex is, and then it'll say yep. advantage, flat disadvantage, and then it roll. Tell me why every time I've done that to this point, it's like open a new tab, and the one time that I ask, it goes the advantage. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably because the uh, trackpad. You might be hitting it, and it's thinking, "Oh, you middle mouse clicked." Yeah, and that then, might be it. That means that means it'll open a new tab. So that probably why. Yeah. All right. I rolled a five. The elemental rolled a fifteen. Okay, the elemental saves. So let's see. Let's see everybody who's saved. Starting all the way up here. Um, Zelric saved. Uh, Yas saved and the elemental saved. So the three of you take only six damage. Yas, you take half of that because this is piercing. Sweet. Uh, um, I, I would like to spirit shield Zelric. Okay. Now let me throw my 2d6 out real fast. Not plus I'm seven. Why are we here? Why are we here? Elemental succeeded and is resistant. So he only takes three. Okay, I'm sorry. You said, what was the total that I'm now having? Six. So I'm six. Okay, so, so I took, I took clear. three. Zel yeah, you took three. Zelric is clear. Uh, the Templar takes. Six. Is this my first damage? I think this is my first damage. Okay. Everything else has missed me. And uh, then... Man, I'm going to flip for it, because... All right. And then Zephyr, he just runs up here. 
And then uh, how much did I take on a fail? 13, sorry. Sorry, as I had to prioritize our No, that's good. It needs to be done. Okay. That's the end of its turn. And I no longer control the elemental. Oh, no. Oh, okay. No. How many nat ones? Uh, Three in one That combat. is a lot of nat ones. Okay, so the elemental is not... Shift. The elemental is not, right, isn't it? Like, not necessarily hostile. Well, <laughs> it's not friendly to you, but it it's also... It's not it, friendly, but it's not necessarily unfriendly. It's not, like, at a target, like... Now, yeah. now all these constructs are my friends, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like it, it's, it's like it it's might attack everybody. You. Yeah, yeah, it might attack your companions. Okay, it will. Uh, yeah, we'll mm. roll for it to see what it does on its turn. Uh -oh. Yeah, it becomes hostile towards you and your companions, and it might attack. Yeah, so it's no, hostile so toward. To attack it. Yeah, it is if hostile to everybody right now. <laughs> well, then I like, definitely. I'm not. I wouldn't want to attack it, but if I were to damage it, would it automatically become hostile towards us? It's I mean, it is hostile, hostile towards us, but it <laughs> may or may not attack us, but if you damage it, it's probably going to be like, I'm going to come after you because you hit me. So Okay. Yeah. yeah. It is hostile towards everything in this room that is not itself. Oh. Uh, okay, Redman. All right, well, that makes Redman's decision a lot easier. He is going to reach into his pouch and grab out this um, <clears throat> spirit gem. Okay. <laughs> He's going to... It's a gem that appears translucent, like a translucent diamond. Uh, upon closer inspection, faint wisps of swirling essence can be seen filling the space with the gem. As an action, you can crush the gem release the spirit inside the spirit uses the orc war chief step block in the monster Sit. manual understands any language you speak and follows your commands do not issue any commands the spirit fights your enemies to the best of its ability the spirit remains for 1d4 plus one rounds before disappearing forever all right roll us a d4 no Spirit gem. Two, so three rounds to go. Um, did you say it acts on your initiative, or does it roll its own? It didn't right. say actually. All right, we'll roll initiative for him. <laughs> There's so much initiative. I know. Okay, I, that's I a found. Good... I found this in a safe before we killed that dragon <laughs> in the ice spire. Yep. Yep. Uh huh. I've had yeah, this before. This I think Zelric and Zephyr came around. Yeah. You did. <laughs> All right. Go so I crushed the gem, go. and yeah. this orc war chief um, will appear. I have he a thing, thing for it, Mr. David. Oh, a sound or something? Yeah, go for it. No, I have a. Uh, what I, can I direct? Oh, I, I uploaded it into my roll 20. Library, oh. but it won't let me drag it on. Oh. Let's put it in the back. There you go. No, you've got it. You've got it. He's chilling here. Yeah, he's, he's chilling next to you. Hell yeah. Um, I don't know if you found it yet, but I have. That's what that's I found what as far as its stat block and whatnot. That looks exactly like what I have, yeah. Uh, yes. Yep, that's what I got. Cool. So is it, it's got its own initiative then? It's got its own initiative. Uh, that's a sh that's actually the worst initiative it could have rolled in a way <laughs> because that's better than yours. So I'm gonna put him at a. I'll just I'll put him after Yas. Well, well. Because yes. otherwise, like since he rolled slightly better than you, that means he has like loses an entire round, which right, is so... such a slave. Let me, Let me reread this then. It says um, it follows, it follows your, your commands. Command. Mm -hmm. um, so does that sound, does sound like, like maybe it would act, act on my turn or no? You can do that. I'm, I'm, I'm fine doing that. Let me give him 18.1. I'll give you 18.2. He'll go right after you, and then you can like tell him what your commands are during his turn. Okay. Right. That's yeah, kind of how I 
thought. thought. Okay. okay, we'll do it that way. So that is your action. Yes, yes. that is my action. Any bonus actions? Try and tune. All right. Is it a is bonus it, action to bonus? tell it what to do? Nope. It's just, just free. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and trying to escape grapple is an action. Yes. Let's go. Bonus, Bonus action is useless for me. Okay. Unless a disengage will allow me to escape. It will not. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that'll That's end my out. turn, and I will be okay. telling, telling the orc or chief that can't get to the thing that's holding on to me. Can it? Uh, He's got some spears that he could throw. Um... What I would what like I would to do to... is I would like for the war chief to try to um, do something to set me. So, okay. Uh, I will give him a contested athletics check against this skitter widget to try to like pull you away. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. So I will. Uh, he rolls a twelve. Oh, wait, that's a save. Sorry. And the Skitter Widget rolls an 11. And he now is holding on to you, and he pulls you over there. Perfect. Perfect. All right. I think that was a good that... use of the or the Orc War Chief's turn. I think so. Yeah, you are free. Excellent. Uh, and so that's his turn. His turn. And my turn. That is his turn. Yep. Okay. All right, Yas. You've got a new orc friend. <laughs> Yas would like a quick potty break. Okay. Let's take a quick potty break. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how everyone else is doing, but I'm feeling it. That's totally fine. Yeah. Let's take a quick break. Let's and do it. We will reconvene in, you know, five, five ish, ten ish. Okay. All right, Yas, your turn. What do we do? Okay, so I'm going to use 15 feet of movement to get over to this guy. And I'm going to attack him like a real reckless person would. Okay. Nice. Let me select all my stuff again. Is a plus nine to hit. Uh, but hang on, I only want to roll one time. First roll. 26 to hit. That hits. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do my damage. Where's the 2d6 plus 7? Holy, Holy smokes. You obliterate yeah. this thing. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, shatter the face, and the lights uh, spin and, and dissipate. All right. And I think well, there's only 10 feet of movement. Five, ten, uh, I was I was standing right here. Yeah, so five and then ten. You can go. You can use the diagonal. Oh, I didn't even think of a diagonal. Right. Yeah. Okay, so now I'd like to come over here. Okay. Man, I'm going to try to attack the construct. The uh, which one? Yeah, the big rolling ball boy. Big rolling ball boy. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Hammond. Okay. First roll sucked. Okay. Second roll. Oh. There's no way. <laughs> There's uh, the, neither of those will will hit. Uh, these just <laughs> whirling <laughs> arm blades. You know they just knock your uh, your maul away before I it hit something juicy. Man. It's not worth it right now. I want to use Lucky, but... Yeah, where's your yeah, dice? I'd save it. Yeah, where's your, where's I'm, your... I'm going to save it. Where's that was physical dice. Yeah, I wish I had my physical dice so I could roll even worse. 
Okay. Anything else, Yas? All right. No. Uh, I mean, I can't, I can't like lean over and be like, drink this, or, or is that for... <laughs> Atalantis and then Lizbob. I can't shoot this guy through the fire guy, can I? Uh, He will have half cover from the fire guy. Which is what, plus two? Plus two. Uh, you also would have disadvantage on the attack from where you are, because since this is now hostile. Okay. <laughs> uh, hold on. I am going, I'm going to, to bonus action. Healing word, Zephyr. Okay. Whatever level you please. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. You don't have to, so you don't want to. I want to, I want to. You were just complaining. For I, heals. I am complaining for heals, but that's because I'm about to drop a fat heal. No. Well, maybe you don't have to use that. that big heal, you know what I mean? You can do something smaller and not use the space. Yeah. yeah. Also, a lot of bad guys go before Zephyr, so a heal on him would yeah. be the worst idea. <laughs> I'll probably go through all the healing you give so me. Plus I <laughs> want to do a third level healing word. Okay. So that's what? 3d4 three, three plus, plus 5. Plus five. On top of whatever the plus is. Okay. And it's on, so it'll be three D four plus eight. Oh, that nice. that's pretty that's solid. Weird. That did yeah. five D four. Oh. Uh, we'll take the first three, which are great. Which is a 11, 19. Wait, that that healing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was my, that was my bonus, action. bonus action. So then I'm going to try to move away from this fire elemental and see what happens. Okay. Good call. Let me roll. Let's see. One, two, three. Take a trip. Okay. Uh, it does not take a swing at you. Nice. So now I'm going to aim at this guy. All right. Oh, shoot. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they'll have this fixed again by next time. What's that at the end of that? You can unleash a 30 foot cone of destructive energy. You can't talk. You can. Each creature. You have a dragon's breath weapon. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? You have a dragon's yeah. breath weapon. Yeah. It does 8d6 damage. Yeah, but it's every creature. You cannot designate targets. Every creature. So... Oh, okay. And it's so that's poison. Not... Oh, and, and it's, it's poison damage. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yippee. <laughs> so uh, let's use it once amazing. a day. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so I got a so... 19 plus 30. 30. Yes, a 30 will hit. Just casually. <laughs> no way. <laughs> and uh, since you're shooting this guy, just worry about your piercing. Yeah. 12 piercing. Take all that first blood on that big boy. Okay. I'm going to do it again. Okay. <laughs> A dirty 20 hits. Eight more. All right. 
its two arrows plunge into the side of the sphere. Any more I movement? Can, can, can I make the last one? No, never mind. I don't know if it would work. I was going to say the um, silver... Oh, the star metal thing? Yeah. I'll let you do that. I'll let you, yeah, knock one off. Okay, so what did that do again? Uh, that knocks one AC off of it. Okay, so if I'm um, I think it's like if it's wearing armor, but I'll I'm, I'll allow it for this thing because it is made it's of metal. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Liz Bob is up, and then Zelric. Okay, so I can still use this thing as a melee weapon. Yeah. I'm just going to do that because it automatically takes seven damage if I hit. Yep. Um, <laughs> so I'm using it as a weapon to attack the other one. All right. Reckless or no? Uh, Yeah, let's go reckless. All right. Why not? Glad and we that's did. That's why we do reckless. 26 hits. Okay, so the one that is grabbing me is dead, and I am still using it as a weapon. Uh, you can still do that, yep. So. 13 damage. 13 on this guy. Let me just check there. Okay. All right. I'm going to hit him again. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, 26 hits again. For 13, okay. okay. And then okay. on the bonus action, I'm going to shield master, shove him five feet away from me. All right, make that athletics check. Uh, you, I'm certain, succeed, but we'll see. Yeah. Yes, you do. Yeah, get out and, of here. Uh, you shove back. Okay. Get out of here. Get away. I'm gonna move this skitter widget just off the board, but. Liz Bob is still holding on to the body of this thing. <laughs> okay. Fair. Um, I mean, and then... What are the two eyes on Liz Bob's token? Uh, it means rage I'm and listening. reckless. Yeah, rage and rage and then recklessly attacking. That's really cool. Yeah, Yas has the ones on him. Yeah. Does Lizbob have movement, or did she start grappled and it stays zero? Once once you become ungrappled, you get your speed back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just, just gonna, gonna like run. step in the way of Redmond and just stare down the skitter widget. Thank nice. You. Nice. Okay. Zelric, it's your turn. What do you do? Okay. Um. I will take a quick glance up, see my friends have dealt with a couple of guys. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> seeing as the enemies keep getting bigger and the more scarier, I'm going to look through it one more time and then probably look to dip out after on my next go round. Okay. Uh, you see a scene of a huge stadium. Um, rings of seats and viewing boxes centered around a sandy field in the middle. In the field, you see a muscular man wearing bronze armor and a red cloak. This is the same man you saw follow Alara and Lyra as they fled the giant creature, uh, the same man who drove the chariot. This man is pummeling another man into the earth, into the sand, and is striking again and again. You see the onlookers above rising to their feet uh, and cheering. Um, in one of these viewing boxes, above on the highest level um very elegantly appointed you see alara and lyra lyra your daughter remains seated she does not stand and cheer at this 
brutal sight. You see Alara stand. You see her lean down, whisper something to your daughter, and then turn and exit through the back of this viewing box out of sight. Uh, no way to try to hear what she said. Not, not <clears throat> from me. Yeah, I want to see. Yeah. Okay. Damn it. Okay. Okay, maybe one uh, more. You get, this, I, you, so you it, get... It's so interesting, though. You can't tell me it's not interesting, guys. Y'all know you want to see what more. Saying, maybe one more luck. Maybe one more. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be mad if you don't look in the portal again. <laughs> okay. Above the table, you, you get the sense that maybe there's a little more information. Okay. You okay. Might, you might see. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to say one more look above the table. Okay. <laughs> um, Every game brings... believes stuff for the biggest uh, win. To this guy that we can barely see because he's enveloped by this uh, fire elemental. <laughs> so he takes what one d ten damage at the start of his turn. Right. I'll roll that real quick. He takes five fire damage. I'm just gonna scoot this guy over here for a second so I can actually access token. Um, he is on fire and he does not seem too upset by that. Uh, what he is gonna do? Shit, I forgot who's there. Is yeah, uh, he's gonna swing on Yas. To... With advantage. Oh, with advantage. Four times with this great sword. Oh, oh my god! Oh, but who's at twelve? <laughs> at twelve now, buddy. <laughs> Not Yas. Good thing he's raging. Okay. Uh, so, so you yes. know my AC is 16. It is 16. That's four hits. I'm uh, so surprised! This is, let me add it all up. Wait. Henry. So, Could you spirit shield yourself? <laughs> that is 47 40. slashing. Uh, that is going to be knocked down to 23. Yeah, we take those. Yeah, and that's not bad for you. No. And I need a strength saving throw. Oh, okay. you got that. Yeah. I got advantage on those while being in a rage. Mm hmm. Hell yeah. Okay, strength saving through. Right click it. Hi, Henry. Thank you. How's about a 23? 23. And uh, he lifts up this boot and just kicks you right in the chest. Uh, but you hold your ground. You are not pushed back 10 feet, which would launch you out of that window now that I think about it. So good. Uh, Who good the fuck gets? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, uh, okay, that is the end of his turn. He's, I guess, yeah, hope they're right there. It is the elemental. He has a reach of five feet. So he has three. Oh, and the elemental's actually right here. So he has one, two, three. He has four possible targets. So we're gonna please roll a no, D4. Please don't. I just actually no, me over <laughs> effort. That is a four. That is the Templar. Uh <laughs> he won two. <laughs> and he does some work on this <laughs> Templar with a 25 to hit and then a crit. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Buzz, he does 35 fire damage to this Templar. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Good thing you rolled that for uh yeah. <laughs> to go after him. Uh that's what he does. He's happy to stay there and just go nuts on this guy. Um it is the end of the round. Oh and... I wonder what's gonna happen. <laughs> Rounds have we had? Uh this is round five. Okay. I we still got a spider sure. widget from round two. I was just hoping that the shield of faith was still up, but I guess it is because it's only been yeah. five rounds. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's Ten rounds. Roll to see where it is. Oh. 
All right. This um, orc war chief is pushed in the way. <laughs> Actually, there's no room there, so he's not going to go there. Uh, this skitter widget is pushed. Well, it's not fair to put it on the one's boat. All right, sorry, he's coming down here, everybody. Sorry, oh, I'm good. Good. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. Good. Um, it shimmers, right? This rift shimmers. Oh god. And you hear a voice come through this rift. You all hear this is your final warning, Zelric Grayscar of Toril. Cease your time meddling at once or face justice in the Hall of Concordance in Sigil, the city of doors. And what Rut -row. emerges from this rift <laughs> is this figure. Oh, creepy. Uh, That's really creepy. It's head inside uh, the armor on its head is an hourglass, and you can see the sand flowing upward in this hourglass, uh, but never, never reducing the amount of sand in the bottom or increasing the amount in the top. Okay, Zephyr, it is your turn. Uh -huh. So I'm going to go ahead and cast second level cure wounds on myself. Okay. Good idea. Big. 16 Huge. plus 16 four, damage. 20. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. It still puts it as damage for me. I don't know why. That's so weird. <laughs> it shows <laughs> healing on mine. Yeah. yeah You're the only one that gets that. <laughs> And then I'm going to go ahead and cast Pull the Dead on Ooh. the construct in front of me. The oh, gatekeeper's ball. Here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wisdom saving throw of 15. Please and thank you. 18. Sad. It is really sad. Wait, and pull of that isn't a bonus action? No, it's an action. But Cure Wounds is an action. You cure You're right. Yeah. I was looking yeah. at um, healing, healing word. word. Yeah. So so no worries. So no harm, no foul. No, 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 no bells word. have been rung. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can unring that bell. Son of a bitch. You're going to remember no bell when you're going to remember. That's old. Uh, any yeah, bonus actions? Yeah. Um, trying to determine if I want to do this or not. So, with my racial ability, I can summon Flame Blade and get one free cast of Burning Hands. Does that still count as casting a spell if it's a racial ability? Yes. You're, yeah. Okay. So that's what that I think. Casting of burning hands. Yeah. All like the casting time still applies to it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all. Okay. Okay. Uh, Zephyr's looking a lot healthier. See, you guys are doing great. We're um, doing great. I'm worried about this guy <laughs> right down here. <laughs> Uh, oh, Lizbo doesn't know anything about him. Yeah. Lizbo, let's see. This thing is gonna. Yeah, he's just gonna come right back for you. Makes sense. And uh, it's gonna make a bite attack with advantage. And wow, a one and a two on the die. Are and you for real? The tail, uh, it's gonna be a 25 to hit. Yeah, that does. So, four piercing, ten lightning, and I need a con save. That four already halved? Yes. Okay, so 14 total? 14 total. Okay. And then a constitution save. Oh. 18 is good enough. 
All right. You shake off any dazed effects from this uh, this lightning blast. Um, and he's going to scoot in here. He's going to start trying to move. You know, he feels an extremely powerful presence has entered the room. And uh, he's going to start going to uh, execute the mission. Okay, it is a uh, big boy here. So because of these whirling blades... Can I interrupt uh, you for a moment? Please do. You just said he's going to continue to execute the mission? Yep. Who is that? The... Oh, as you understand, yeah, the mission of these things is to stop the time meddling that is going on. So... Sorry, I, one more time. Who's going to try to do that? Uh, you, this, this skitter widget, I mean, it attacked Liz Bob, but now you just see it skittering like into the main Okay, room okay, okay. Yeah. Understood, got it. Yeah. Uh, this construct at the start of its turn, uh, this is going to be Redman, Yas, Zephyr, <laughs> The Elemental and the Templar each take six slashing damage from these blades that are that are swirling all around it. Don't leave me alone! Uh, Yas, you only take three. And we'll look at this guy. Can I... Is... Reaction something? I, I gotta... Um, this is not an attack, so I don't think like your evasion or uh, uncanny dodge, uncanny dodge wouldn't work. I don't or, think. What about defensive duelist? Uh, we... oh, it's a melee attack. Yeah, this is just basically like you're in these whirling blades. Understood. You that extend out? Yeah. Um. And it's going to make two arm blade attacks. And we'll see. One, two, three is Zephyr. Sorry, man. <laughs> uh, it's a 24 and a 22 to hit. Okay. Uh, assuming those both hit, that's a total of 43 slashing damage. I know we are picking on Zephyr tonight. That's, that's you just how the dice are rolling. 40... Is the net ones not enough for me? I know. I'm sorry. Did you just say uh, how many damage? 43. And I think Yas is giving you some of that back. You're muted, bud. Oh. <laughs> I forgot you could hear the snoring that I muted. Yes, sorry. I'm spirit shielding. Okay. Uh, yeah, get 11 of that back. Zephyr, as you are embraced by spectral big beefy minotaurs that take... Lovingly. Some of that. Yes. <laughs> that takes some of that for you. That was big. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Redman, it's well. your turn. It's your turn and then your orc buddies. Can I hit... The rolly ball guy from where I'm at. Yes. Without cover. Yes. Yep. He's he's big enough and like extended out, you know. Good. All if right. If you move up to him, you wouldn't provoke opportunity. No, I'm not worried about that. I don't want my war chief to be able to move up. Mm. Okay. If needed. All right. So from where I'm at, where Redmond's at, he's going to. Nine lives, short sword, yeah. to attack. So that's a d20 plus nine. A 17 does not. Oh, wait. That's, yes, it does. With minus yes, one does. AC? With minus one AC, it does. With I the assist see. from Atalantis. Yeah. Woo, yeah. <laughs> that is a sneak That's attack. huge. <laughs> yeah. 
Tag. 66 one plus 5. Over, yeah. <laughs> 28. Yeah, no, it's okay. Okay. A big stack on the short sword. Okay. Um... He's going to bonus action disengage. Okay. Move to here. So you don't need to disengage from him because he uh, you attacked him and you've got the mobile feet. Oh, that's right. So no bonus yeah. action. I move away. Um, and then I will yield to the orc war chief. Okay. Who will um, attack, attack the, the this thing? thing? Okay. And he has two, two. multi. He's got multi attacks. So two attacks with his great axe. Okay. Do you want me to roll him? Go for it. I've got the thing here. All right. He swings twice with his great axe. A seventeen and a sixteen. And neither of those will hit. No. Yeah. Oh, buddy. <laughs> you trap. Uh, anything else for him? Yeah, he, 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 let's see. His battle cry. That is an action. No. no. Yeah. One more round with him. Okay, so that has to happen uh, next round. Yeah, two two more. Yeah, actually, I I I just moved it down. So. Oh, okay. Two. So you got two uh, more rounds. There'll be two more rounds if we're here for two more rounds. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that it for him as well? Yes. Okay, that brings us back to Yas. Okay, I'm gonna run in this line with mm -hmm. my. Uh, crushing Rhino. Okay. Uh, let me... How do you put it in the chat again? Really like a display right now, if you just click on it, it should show up in chat. Before that, yeah. yeah. If you roll a melee <laughs> attack, it should pop up. Because <laughs> yeah. that's all it does now, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there you go. There we go. Okay. So, it's a DC 16 strength or deck saving throw. I don't know if that's... I get to choose, or they, whatever's better. Uh, they get to choose. Yeah, I'm just seeing. Okay. Uh, does it apply toward the final target as well? It should apply to all in the line. Let's see. You can move through another creature's space, regardless of its size. Each creature must make a... Okay. So, you can move down here. Um, and if it fails... It's thing it will get knocked, you know. Somewhere. Everything in that line has to do one. Yeah, we'll start with the Templar. Uh, this is a Dex or Strength save, you said. Yeah. Okay. DC sixteen. Uh, Templar fails. The... Ooh, three D twelve. I get to roll that. Yeah, just roll that now, and then I'll apply. Yeah. The... DC sixteen. For DC. Fire elemental fails. Ooh, so close to amazing. Oh, wait. Oh, never mind. That was not amazing. They're D12s, not D6s. Uh, the sphere guy fails. So they each take 12, right? Okay. And they're also shunted 10 feet in the adjacent direction. Okay, so boom. I mean, Construct won't be able to move. He just gets to hit the long open. <laughs> yeah. This guy is shunted 10 feet and is still inside the... <laughs> oh, the that would have been... I wasn't thinking about where they would go. Yeah, now okay. they're next to Zelrin. Yeah, I'm totally yeah. looking out. I and... only hooped him on accident. You started... Okay, so we'll get. We'll have the big guy. Oh, I forgot to mention there, uh, everyone who failed is prone. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, Obviously, the elemental won't be. Yeah, I think the elemental is immune to prone. Yeah, he's just like, okay. He is. The Templar, I'm sure, is not. 
the wheelie guy, I think, is... How is he not immune to prone? He's a ball. Okay. He has legs. This is really uh, yeah. weird. I, his legs he's, just he's like standing, lay he's out. standing on swords. <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> has an up and a down, I guess. Yeah, his legs splay out. And now his, the ball is on the ground. Uh, <laughs> we're just going to pick him. <laughs> That's free advantage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom. Okay. And. Let me read your ability again. You can move while moving through another creature's space. Each creature in that line. Okay. We'll give the big guy a strength or a dex save. Um, let me check. Uh, and he uh, chooses to succeed. Ooh. He oh, chooses to succeed. Oh, Christ. Oh. Okay, it's all right. I just choose Yep. All right. Anything else, yes? Um, yeah, I'll chug a potion. I have a uh, potion of greater healing. I'm going to go ahead and sip all right. up. Right. Go ahead and roll for that. <laughs> Right side. Right. Yas is uh, public enemy number one for the elemental. <laughs> probably. Um, the elemental 17. is probably no longer the worst thing to worry about here. Yeah. I, I got. I gathered that. <laughs> yeah. um, that's that's I forgot my bad. One thing. Can I get a Constitution saving throw from Redmond? I forgot to do that for your concentration earlier. It's just a DC ten. Yep. Hang on. Con? Yeah. Con. Con save, yeah. And then it will be Adelaide says, oh, boom. You're so blurry. You don't even care. <laughs> All right, Adelandis, you're up, followed by Lizbob, followed by Zelric. I don't know what to do. I guess I'm going to go for this big bad. bad. Okay. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. <laughs> but I'm going to do it. <laughs> A 13 does not hit. It just plinks directly off of his shielding. Awesome. So I'm going to do it again. Okay. Yeah. A 23 hits. Knock his AC. Oh, yeah. Oh, now we are going to, yeah, going forward, sorry, we are going to, like, you have to declare a star metal area. Yeah. Or, oh, okay. I'll nice. let you, if you want, I'll let you re-roll it now that you're declaring. Or you could just take that 23 with the regular just arrow. Damage. I'm just going to take the 23. Okay. Why are you rolling exploding dice again? Uh, I don't know. She's not rolling 20s, so it's, it's huh. okay. <laughs> but... Um, okay. Go away. Oh, it's, gone. it's gone. All right, roll damage against this guy, and uh, again, just the piercing. Well, nice. These are just yellow box. I don't know. <clears throat> um, okay. He takes all 12 of that damage. And his health bar has been adjusted accordingly. Um, anything else, Atalantis? I'm going to swarm him. All right. Two more. Okay. Any movement? Oh, she's good. Okay, Lizbob. Uh, seeing that this one wants to run away, she's going to drop the dead one. Okay. <laughs> and recklessly try to get this one. All right. Nineteen hits. 
roll damage. And then here's my athletics for the grapple. Okay. You grapple it. Cool. I'm going to drag it over here to the ball and attack the ball with it. Okay. All right. <laughs> and 18 hits the ball. So seven more here. And 11 to the ball. And this guy is grappled. Okay. Um, and that's all I think I'm going to do. Let me double check. Yeah, that's all I'm going to do. Okay. You're still grappling that critter widget? Well, I grappled, the... I grappled the alive one now. I dropped the dead <laughs> one and then I grappled. I now got yeah. the other critter widget in my hand. And I'm just beating the ball with it. <laughs> All right, now you see how full this room is of bad people. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the like, fuck. <laughs> Actually, this one's like, ah. Zephyr. Um, uh, how angry does the fire elemental look? The little he wants to kill me since she got hit. <laughs> um, it looks angry at the Templar, and it looks angry okay. at Yas. Okay. Yeah. And the Templar can't attack me because he's prone, or is it just disadvantage on his attacks? Uh, it's disadvantage, and he can stand up at the start of his turn. And he's after me. Yeah. Uh, oh, shit. So, I mean, if you moved now and he took a swing, it would he'd have disadvantage on it because. Right. Maybe every Um. Shield. Yeah, but that burns my reaction when I could, like, use a reroll for something, which is nice. Um, I could probably take a hit from him, right? He has four. four. I got 40 health. I think I can take a hit from him. What? Okay. He has four attacks. Yeah, but he can well, only attack on me once reaction. on a reaction. Yeah, on a reaction, it's just one swing. Okay. okay. So, um, I... And you got Shield of Faith on. Don't forget. Yeah. I'm sitting at 16 right now, so I'm not doing toward terrible on okay. AC. Um, yeah, I'm going to move 10 feet over next to Zephyr. So if he swings at me, I'll take the swing. He crits. Uh, oh, no. Only, fi only 15. Um, okay, I'll take 15. That's fine. Okay. I'm chilling. I'd like to shield it. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Hold on. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Double that 20. He misses. It misses. Hey. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, partner. <laughs> I, I didn't even register that. You catch. Yeah, I got so excited by the by the green number. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, that's funny you. No. So yeah, he you know, lying down on fire, you know, his eyes still locked on you, um, you know, pursuing his quarry to the to to death. Uh Swings his sword, you hop over his, his sword and scurry over next to Zephyr and uh, the big ball. Yep. Um, I'm gonna drink a health potion and then I will look through the portal. Okay. Actually, actually, wait, 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 wait. You? Yeah, uh, I, I do have a bonus action. That was just I just used movement. What are you allowed to use them? No, sorry. So it's oh, your action. oh, it's my full turn. Is the it's your. Yeah, your full okay. turn. So you can move, but... Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Then yeah, I'll just look through. Okay. You look through the rift, focus through the prism, and you see Alara standing in what appears to be a temple. In front of her is a stone brazier, um, upon which a snake is writhing in agony as it burns, consumed with hot fire. Rising behind her is uh, a giant statue of a fearsome warrior, uh, an arm armored and helmeted figure 
with the torso and head of a man, but the legs of a bull. Uh, four legs, like a centaur, but bull okay. instead of a horse. And that is what you see. And then, as you're looking through the prism, uh, the what you see in the rift is the swirling again, and all you see then is the astral sea again, essentially. Do you feel like you've seen what you can see through this rift? Yeah. Okay. So, that means everybody's got to survive another round. <laughs> it is the Templar's turn. He takes... In. Let's see. In. I don't know. One oh. fire damage <laughs> at the start of his start. That's bullshit. He stands up and uh, comes over to Zelric. And he's gonna go nuts. I mean, this is his quarry. He leaves the, the fire elementals. That's true. Oh, yeah, that is true. So. Thank you. Thank you. The fire elemental yeah. will um will take his opportunity attack and hit for eight fire damage. <laughs> this okay. this fire elemental has like, right. soloed this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's still wanna work. Um, and then the Templar swings at you four times. Um, can I, if, should he hit multiple times, I would like to spear shield his second attack. Okay. He hits, God, he hits four times. Uh, oh. the second attack, roll that um, reduction. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm I'm gonna cast shield, so that puts okay. me at twenty one. Does he still hit four times? <laughs> he hits four times. Oh Holy shit! Oh wow! His health isn't even that wild. He just rolled really, really well. Ooh. Second one is reduced by eight. Okay. Damn it! I wish I would use a different, different reaction then. Uh, that is thirty eight total damage after that negative eight. Okay. Oh my goodness! Chilling. No biggie. <laughs> you're oh, in okay. you're in range of the automatic damage of the ball. Just no. It's fine. That's true. Everything here's um, fine. I'm chilling. All right. That... <laughs> oh, he's not sorry, he stood up, right? So he's not prone anymore. Okay. Um it is the fire elemental's turn, and the fire elemental is coming for Yas. Get over here. And he tries to slam you twice, and a 13 is the best he can do. He sucks. You were not reckless on your last turn. Correct. Uh, which, I guess, thinking of, I did damage, but I didn't, like, make a melee attack. Am I still raging? Yes. Yeah. If you... Okay. If you do damage by hitting something in any way, I, I'm going to count that for keeping your rage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is the inevitable's turn. What's up, brother? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, brother? <laughs> he. It's going to have an effect. Reaches oh, out with this uh, lightning fast fist. Yas. Um, mm -hmm. He hits you with an unerring slam attack, which automatically hits for 60 force damage. 60? 6D. Oh my god. We're chilling. Not damage. Not halved. We're, we're chilling. Um, I'll tell you right now, that would have downed this one. Adelandis, will you. <laughs> Flip a coin or roll any die for me and call odds or evens before you roll it. You're muted. Okay, I'm gonna say odds. Odds. All right, roll us a die. Oh no. And he steps over here, Atalandis, and with his second unerring slam attack, 
Oh no! You for sixty force damage. I'm down. You are unconscious. It's okay. You're not not dead. You're unconscious. Um, Zelric, your shield of faith dissipates. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. And there's got to be a good uh, unconscious thing here, right? Come on. Oh, this fucking dog snoring, dude. I mean, you didn't take a hit the whole time, and just this one time is like, boof! One day, <sighs> one deep. <laughs> and uh, he looks at you, Zelric, and says, I repeat, Zelric Grayscar of Toril, cease your time meddling. I'm even, man. Your fr- <laughs> Zelric, I like that your- offer. Your your friends will not be taken into custody. You oh, shall. cool. We get to walk out? <laughs> That's one interpretation. Okay, <laughs> Zephyr, it's your turn. <laughs> How optimistic. <laughs> hey, he said we get to go. <laughs> not my words. Think about your buddy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Lots of yeah. options. Too. Lots of options to try and Lots run through. Of options. Remember, the time bridge can only be cut by Zolric. And he must be conscious. And he must be conscious. Okay, so I have an idea. Oh god, I love this. We love um, that for us. Does it involve blanket. a blanket? Does it involve a blanket? I summon you. It does not involve a blanket. It's something that I can't do, but I'm hoping that David might let it happen for the narrative's sake. Okay, let's let's see. I hypothetically <laughs> would use my action to shove Zelric away five feet. Okay. And use my reaction to instead of do an opportunity attack, try and block his opportunity attack. If you shove him, yeah. uh, he won't take an opportunity attack because it's Zelric is not using his movement. Too. Okay. So you can do that. That's totally about you can just shove Zelric five feet away and it will this guy will not get an opportunity to attack on him. Okay, then I yeah. will shove <laughs> Zelric five feet. Okay. Zelric, I'm going to verbally to tell Zelric, I am pushing you. <laughs> Let it happen. Okay. <laughs> Make an attack roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta beat you gotta beat a 19. Really? <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. 17. Oh, I just wanted to give him a hard time about it. <laughs> oh my god. All right. <laughs> Zelric is shoved five feet that way. Um, all right, that is your action. You have your bonus action. Okay. Bonus action. Oh, man, feels like Zelda could use a, a meaty heal. Fucking meaty. I'm well aware I could also use it, too. You have a master, master healing word would be dope. I'm gonna move five just... feet, and does if I move five feet, will I still stay in range of the ball, but not take opportunity? Where are you moving? Just right there. You have seen, just FYI, you have seen this guy use a reaction to attack someone who moves within five feet of him before. So... What about diagonal? I could go here. Could go there, yeah. Uh, you I'm won't gonna... provoke from him. You won't provoke I'm... from the ball. Right, I'm gonna right. burn it because I saw him try and swing at Zelric earlier. Yes, um, but then he had his turn. Yeah, so he has his reaction again. He's got it back. You're right. So oh. it's up to you. Fuck it, I'm taking the reaction if he chooses to do it. Okay, he does. 
with a 23 to hit for 8 slashing. That's fine. Okay. And I'm going to cast a 4th level Cure Wounds on Zelric. Well, cure wins an action. Oh, you shoved, yeah, you, you shoved me for an action, so you have a bonus yeah. action. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Sorry. Healing you guys bonus action. Um, yeah, um, heal, healing word. Healing word, okay. I'm trying to do this turn ever so meticulously. <laughs> so that's take, 28 healing. I take 22 points of healing word damage. <laughs> 28 to Zolrik. Uh, that is very helpful to him. I'm over okay. half And uh, do you heal some from that as a life cleric? Or is that I, only. I do. I heal nice. six back. Hell yeah. Nope. That's awesome. Okay. Any more movement? Or are you good? <laughs> Zolrik just had to be bottom of the order. Okay. I'm, I'm staying right here, buddy. All right. Uh, this skitter widget that you're holding on to, Liz Bob, is going, still trying to chomp on you, zap you. Uh, you were reckless last turn, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it is a 24 to hit on the bite. That will be five piercing damage. And that's already halved. That's already halved. It's a dirty 20 to hit on its tail. That will be two piercing damage, five lightning damage, and I'll need another constitution save. 18. You, you, you've been zapped before, apparently, because none of these have bothered you. No. Uh, it's this one here. And it's a one. light hit. I'm, I'm grappled, too. Four. What's that? Since it's bite hit, I'm also grappled. By it. Oh, yes. I'm thank you. You're grappled too. What's a good? Um, <laughs> all right. Whatever. So, I mean, remember, if you really want to escape that grapple, you can use one of your attacks or your bonus action to, to try to shove it five feet, which yep. would break that grapple. You know, so. Yep. Um, okay. So... It is the sphere's turn, and we're going to roll a couple of d4s to see who he makes these attacks against. We hope the fire elemental, please. Or it is Lizbob and Yas. Of course. Uh, hey, so if anyone, if anyone had half, to take half damage, I'll take half damage. Chill. Yeah. It's half damage. Also, I forgot, sorry. Uh, for Zephyr, Lizbob, the Elemental, and Yas, at the start of its turn, it's two slashing. For Lizbob and Yas, it's just one. Two. What about yeah. Zephyr? Uh, two to Zephyr, yeah. Okay. You're within five feet of it. Okay. Four, so, two. Uh, arm Blade come down on Yas first. Just a straight roll. It's a 15 to hit. No. Okay. And a 27 to hit Lizbob. Hey, thanks for that, Lizbob. <laughs> uh, after cutting in half, it's going to be 11 slashing. Ooh. To Lizbob. Lizbob is taking some attacks now. Yeah. Yeah, Redmond, that Lizbob's in the room. <laughs> Redmond, you and your orc buddy are up. All right. Um, so... The orcs. Um, battle cry. Yeah. I, mean, I think this will put it in the chat. There we go. Uh, did, did, can you guys see that? Or is that just no. showing me? No. Just for you. Uh, all right. Let me just copy and paste it. So it can do this battle cry, giving everybody within 30 feet of it advantage on their next attack roll till the start of its next turn. Um, and it can also make an attack on its bonus action. Right? Uh, yes. 
So everyone, that is that is <clears throat> all the good guys have advantage on their attack rolls until this guy goes again. And uh, including him, and then he can make a bonus action attack at advantage. So he's going to move towards the Templar okay. and attack it with its bonus action. He's going to take uh, He can't take a bite attack, so he's going to take a tail attack, and that will miss from the Skitter Widget, so he can run over there, and he can go after that Templar with his Great Axe at advantage. That's a 22 to hit. That is 7 slashing damage. Heavy and that Templar is down. Perfect. Oh, thank God. The dude lasted <laughs> way too long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about the skitter widget? Nice. Yeah, that thing oh, skitters for a fucking long time. I know. It won't die. Like when Bernie came out. All right, so that was yeah, the plan. Yeah, he's been around since the <laughs> That was the uh, board play. <clears throat> and uh, Re now Redmond. Yeah, yes. what are you up so to? that was the plan. So now Redmond is going to... Let's see. Where's Bob is Where's... within five feet of that skitter widget? <laughs> He's actually told him to it. <laughs> but also within five feet of the ball if you want to get sneak attack on the ball. Okay. He's going to use his um, feline agility. To double his mm -hmm. movement speed. Okay. Wants to get to like here. Uh, yep, that's totally good. Skitter Widget has used its reaction. So. 50 feet. Yep. And he's going to dump a healing potion down the throat of Beautiful. Roll for it. Is that 2d4 plus what? Plus, plus 2. I completely forgot Adelandis is down. She got one shot. Or she, got, she got rock and stop and robot. Did. I did. Yeah. Um, and Adelandis heals for six hit points <laughs> and her eyes <laughs> flutter open. Uh, she is lying down on the floor looking up at a fire elemental and an inevitable in her face. But she is alive. Okay, I still have 30 feet of movement. And if I use my That's dash, <laughs> if I, um, what Hang did on. I, what did I do to pour that down her throat in action? In action, yeah. So I should still be able to bonus action dash and drag her. Uh, you'd have to drag her. You'd have to use like an attack to. To grab her, basically, uh, right? To like grab her. So, damn. yeah. Okay. Uh... I will say the inevitable is not focused on Atlantis right now. It's locked in on Selric. Um, it, it, you know, has come here. It's made an example of its strength and seriousness to the wizard who's fucking with time and uh that was that was the warning <laughs> and a good warning yeah <laughs> okay uh So there's nothing I can do with her. I don't think so. Um, I mean, if you stepped here, you'd give the fire ele elemental another possible target, you know, on its turn, uh, which would reduce slightly the chance that it would go after Atalantis. Although it's still pretty pissed at Yas. So, okay. So then I'll move there. That makes okay. it 55 feet. 
So I've used my action and my feline agility. Mm -hmm. I think that's it then. I don't have a bonus. That's it. Okay. That's a good turn. Uh, all right. Yas, you're up. And then Atalandis. And then Lizbob. Zerg, get us the fuck out of here. My ink! <laughs> <laughs> but first, I'm going to reckless attack the crop because I just saw Adelinus get fucking dropped. All right, let's see. You're attacking uh, who? Big guy. Uh, the inevitable, the court. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Fuck that guy. First roll. This. Ooh, nat twenty. <laughs> okay, a nat twenty hits. It is reckless. I was going to declare that, so I'm sticking to it. So here's yeah. a second roll just to show that. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's six d six, right? Uh, yes, six d six plus your, uh, your rage, your seven bonus, yeah. and rage and everything. Thirty damage. Thirty. Eat shit, buddy. Okay. It's not gonna be a little fraction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. we're being reckless, so we're going to do it again. Okay. A 24 hits. Well, at least I could still hit the guy. Yeah. That's nice. This is very brave. Fuck this guy. <laughs> well, he doesn't have a reaction where he'll hit you. Oh, sure. I'm rolling max damage. <laughs> I, I double checked that he does not, sadly. Uh, I was going to do it anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, you have made two, with your mighty, absolutely brutal swings, you've made like two little dents in this guy. Take that, bitch. <laughs> I, I mean, I ain't got nothing else. That's okay. Atalandis, uh, it is your turn. You are prone. Um, well. I'm going to stand up. Okay. And then I have no idea what I'm going to do. Stay right there. <laughs> I'm going to bonus action drink a healing potion. Okay. Do I still have a greater? I do. I'm going to drink a greater healing potion. All right. 4d4 plus 4. I believe. 4. Yep. Eleven. Okay. Eleven. Nice. Not great, but I'll take it. Basically tripled your current hit points, so. Okay. And then Zelfric has a heart on him. Who did that? I I did it because of the um <laughs> death award or whatever. Oh that, nice. Yes. That. I got cast on me. Totally I forgot, forgot about, about Death Lord. Yeah, totally well, forgot about it. So if I would have gotten hit, I would have been fine. I would have been at one HP. But that would have been uh, wow. yeah. But we're chilling. For <laughs> once, for one time, if you got hit again, then <laughs> yeah, okay. yes, yeah. And then I guess I'm gonna. I don't even know. What so you've got your action. Uh, you, if if you want to get away, remember you can use your action to disengage, which would not provoke opportunity attacks. Then, yes, yeah, so I'm um, going to use my action to disengage. Okay. And, and then, then so then full, I have you got no, half your half. half your movement. Yeah. Oh. What is that? I have forty feet, so twenty feet. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Okay. Very good. So that's my turn. That's a good turn. Liz Bob, you're up. Um, I'm just still recklessly attacking this ball, trying to get this skitter widget off of my arm. Okay. <laughs> you're attacking it with the skitter widget? Yeah, attacking it with the skitter widget. All right. 
No crits. Uh, 18. 18 hits. Uh, I'll go ahead and roll the second attack, too, while I got yeah. the d20 up. That also hits. Okay. 17 and 11 damage. 28. Okay, pretty... I mean, it's an awful sound. It's just like metal on metal as you're slamming this skitter into, <laughs> into this, um, uh, this gear keeper. Oh, which was, and, was prone. I'd to see that. He would have stood up on his turn, obviously. On his last turn. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I totally forgot about that. Um, Shoot. I'll shield Master Shove and try to get him back down to prone. The okay. The ball. The ball. He will the ball. resist with strength. Oh my god, he rolled a twenty-five. I rolled a twenty-six. A twenty-six. <laughs> and he is prone. This again. somehow proneable ball. <laughs> yeah. Um he is prone. It's not gonna matter because Zilric should sever the tie, but Liz Bob doesn't know that. Well, it's up to Zelric. Zelric, what do you Oaks do? Focus on you guys. Zelric, get the fuck out. <laughs> Zelric's like, I, I'm home. I, I'm back here. I love this place. I love being in my home. Home. I'm in my home now. We're fighting this out, guys. <laughs> no. Zelric, I'll kill you myself. I get layer actions, right? <laughs> 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 All right, Zelric, what do we do? Um, Zelric will look at the inevitable and be like, Okay, we're out, and then I'll snap my finger and sever the connection. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you begin to do this, you see the um, the inevitable. Its um, armor plates have like opened over its chest, and you just see this incredibly bright arcane energy, like swirling, boiling, in its chest. And you cut the tie before whatever is going to happen can happen. <laughs> um, yeah. You all find yourselves back in this laboratory. Um, a so lot of you quite you quite beat up, <laughs> but everybody is alive. Um, and. Zelric, you are strapped into, you know, you're strapped into this thing, um, and a familiar sensation, you know, comes over from, from that day that you were in there, and you begin coughing, uh, and the rest of you see Zelric coughing up some blood, you know, onto his, his robe and his shirt. Uh, this has clearly taken an enormous toll on Zelric to manage this, this ritual. And an enormous toll on a lot of the rest of you to to help. So we're all damaged, like we were. Like we come back with that same health. You come back with that same health. Um, Am I still in rage? Uh, we're out of initiative. So if there's something you immediately want to do with your rage, like you well, can. <laughs> if, if I willingly drop it, uh, I can. Expend hit dice and regain hit points as if I finished or short rest. Uh, I don't so know if that's like no, that'd okay. be something you have to do like on your turn, and yeah, so it. I mean, we're out of initiative. We're going to short rest anyway, so it's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, and Xander, Xander, you know, rushes yeah. over and, and unstraps you, Zelric, and uh, says, "What did you?" You all look terrible. I'm sorry, that's really rude. But you all look really terrible. What happened? We got attacked by robots. Constructs. <laughs> uh, the inevitable yeah. game. He's not a nice guy. <laughs> you saw He's one. very strong. Very, very oh, strong. Yeah. That's incredible. It was you, know, incredible. you saw one and lived. I died. Pretty much. <laughs> this <laughs> this <laughs> close. <laughs> um, Multiple times. He he's floored by this, right? I mean, these things are called inevitables for a reason. Uh, the the notion of some of you know somebody, let alone all of you, seeing one 
and escaping from its pursuit of you, right? Um, not being arrested, you know, and transported back to sigil for, for prosecution mm -hmm. or Arrest. killed outright um, is is incredibly impressive, right? And um, he's, you know, he's kind of going on about this, explaining, like, how, wow, you guys are, like, rock stars. That's all awesome. Not really realizing that's probably, like, not exactly what everybody, like, wants to hear right now, have this conversation. But he's just, like, really, really jazzed about this. He says, well, Zelric, we'll have to, we'll have to talk. You'll have to write down everything about this, about this, this creature. I, yeah, I, I plan on making some extensive notes on everything that's happened in the past yeah uh, a couple minutes <laughs> uh, <laughs> um at while xander and zelric are talking you hear a it's happening at this window over here i'm gonna go look okay. why wouldn't i okay <laughs> <clears throat> um and you see a squirrel that has climbed quite high up on this tower <laughs> um and when you walk over um the squirrel is is chittering at you and it's clearly chittering at you so i'm gonna cast yeah. speak with animals okay all right, you cast this, and uh, the chittering begins to make sense. Um, this squirrel is talking very excitedly, you know, very kind of worriedly, very fast, <laughs> uh, as I imagine squirrels would talk. Um, and it says, daughter, daughter of the wood, I bring uh, a message, I bring a message from the lady herself, lady of the forest, you know, yes, my leaky. Uh, she, well, first, you, you look a little worse for wear, I'm sorry, but, uh, no, um, I was, I'll get better, what, I'll get better. What was my message? What was I supposed to, yes, um, my, my leaky asked that, that I ask you, uh, that is, uh, that I, that I tell you, um, one of the goddess's very faithful servants, very, very dear to, to my leaky, um, who, who protects the the stretch of wood uh you see between between this city and and the great mountain um the mountain that was once fire uh is 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 is, is what well a, a, her unicorn her unicorn this is vassal to to Meliki, yes and uh thither and yon is his name maybe you've you've met him i don't know um but no, that was the, the problem. The problem is that every morning, thither and yon, uh, I, I I was told praise praise to my leaky, and then and then he dips his horn down into this small pond in the forest um, to to imbue it with the blessing of the goddess. Yes, uh, but but this morning, our, our lady she heard no prayer. She heard no prayer from the unicorn. And and she cannot see the pond. She cannot feel it. And so she, well, she worries. She worries for her friend. She worries for, for the unicorn, for, for Thither and Yon. And you are, um, well, she asked after you. You see, she asked the, that I find you and, and on the lady's behalf, you know, perhaps investigate, make sure that the unicorn is, is okay or or if he isn't, to, to find him. Um, that, that is what she asked. Do that. Okay. okay. As soon as I can. Yes, I understand. But I'm in the middle of something at the moment. Yes. But I will look... do it as soon as I can. Yes, you look very busy. I, I, I've, been, I've been looking through all these windows here. I'm very tired. I'm going to go back down to the ground now. It's uh, it's very high up here. So Yes. Get some rest. Um, thank you. Uh, the lady, she, she, said, she said, you will know the way. So you will know the way as if you have traveled there many times before. That will that will be her assistance. Okay. All right. I'm going to go rest. It's nice to meet you. You too. Okay. Get rest. Stay Thank safe. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Uh, as the squirrel heads down, and as um, you know, the rest of you are recovering a bit. Zalric is talking to Xander. You hear a banging on the door on the south of the room. Three casts pass without a trace. Okay. Um, and <laughs> you hear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Redmond runs up to the door. What you doing? I'm going to undo my yeah. snare. Okay. Oh man, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Let me... So I, I redid pass without a trace. Yeah, so you do that, and everybody is get very light-footed again. Uh, the banging continues, and you hear the voice of uh, Lady Avalier, and it says Xander. Xander. Question. Yep. Could, could I hide in that coffin? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> um. <I'm> scared. <laughs> Xander is scared too. Uh, <laughs> Xander. Uh, so yeah, Zephyr jumps in this coffin, closes it. It's uh, thankfully it is it unoccupied, Zephyr. Um. And so it's just you. Um, and Xander is kind of panicking. Uh, I'd like to guard Xander. Just like stand okay. in front of him. Like... Okay. Um, so, uh, she's not going to be happy, Zalric. Uh, what, do, what do any of you, what do you all think uh, we should do? Um, uh, are you, Zalric, are you, I have are you able to teleport? <laughs> I can teleport one of us. Yeah, I can teleport one of us, but that's like going to help the other people uh, here. Uh, Prince, but it's about to die. Die. <laughs> um, yes, lady. Uh, yes. And the door explodes in splinters. Oh. And in floats in Lady Alwyer. Fury in her eyes. There are two possibilities here, Xander and guests. One is that you have deliberately and willfully violated my instructions, my restrictions on where you may and may not go within this tower. The other is that I misspoke or did not make myself clear earlier. Guests, is it possible I did not make myself clear earlier? Uh, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, I, I was having to chase him around to keep him from, you know, being him. I was, I was keeping the owl bear under control. Yeah, Lizbub's only been awake for like two days, man. She doesn't even know what's going on. I was bored. I was keeping Lizbub under control. I didn't hear anything you said. I'm sorry. And so they, they had to try and corral us, and we just kept on going. It's on us. We apologize. That's so I thought Mr. I said something. Grayscar. Yes. Tell Hi. your friend to exit that coffin. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll pull out my, my copper wire and point towards the coffin and say, except for the, the jig is up, get out of the coffin. <laughs> Would it be a bad but time? In a more, in a no more serious here? tone, not laughing. No one's here. This is the guy we had to corral. <laughs> In a you very are... high-pitched women's voice, I'm going to say, "It's here." <laughs> Housekeeping. 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 Uh, please get out of the coffin. <laughs> and then I'll eventually open the coffin. You. <laughs> Probably going to stay in it. 
Mr. I'm dying. That's that's you can stay in there. That's fine. <laughs> Mr. Grayscar, I understand have managed to make yourself friend to Master Jerome. And you, Mr. Silvermist, I understand have somehow earned some favor of the Lady Silverhand. Which is why I will do all of you an exceptional favor and merely expel Mr. Silvermist from the Brotherhood and expel you all from the premises. This is, I hope you understand, a great kindness. You're mean. Liz Bob. Liz Bob stand. Liz Bob, no. Liz Bob. Again, I apologize. We have the understanding. Liz Bob is new to the world. Thank you. I think we're um, very, very grateful for your generosity, headmistress. Um, we will leave henceforth. I'm gonna grab, grab Liz Bob's hand. Yes. Yeah. Leave. You will. And she waves her hands, snaps her fingers, and you ap all appear outside on the front great stairs of the host tower. We're fucking alive. Bro, we kept the cookbook. You yeah. I, the cookbook. I was afraid I, I that, that I she yet. said that she was going to expel us from the premises, we were going to get launched out of a window. Out of the window. <laughs> I would have gone into a rage. We're going to be expelled for sits. <laughs> so mean. Um, Liz, Bob, no. Trust me. She's very kind. Does that mean I still have Tasha's book? You have Tasha's book, and Wait, you have I... the uh, you have the cookbook, and Yas has a. Yeah, once we get into town, I'm going to pull him. out the book and be like, I ha I have this for some reason. I just kind of. Took it. <laughs> Is this any use to use our? I I can look it over when we get a second. Probably should get out of the town or find somewhere to rest. We need to Actually, rest. We I, should I get out of. Rest. We should get out of the town and then rest. I don't want to really stay in Luskin if we don't have to. But well, <laughs> on the Atlantis is gonna be like, guys, I have to stay in the area. Okay. Oh God. I got a What's visit from on? a squirrel at the window. Another side quest. A squirrel? Is that what that was? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I want to go home, man. It, my it, leaky it, sent me the squirrel. Did a meteor fall out of the sky again? <laughs> hey, is there another fun hole? <laughs> hey. I've heard, is that I've heard, a unicorn. Fun hole part two. Look, I've heard things of, of Rat Alley. Can we check it out? No, I don't trust anything called Rat Alley. <laughs> I might not be the most literate person. Rat Alley. Rat Alley. What do I have on Rat Alley? How about uh, Half I got, Moon I got, Street? I, got, I could tell you something about Rat Alley. Are you checking out Rat Alley? Or what are we doing? I mean, if no, we could leave through the we, south gate. Oh. And Rat Alley is towards the south side of the city. So, I mean, we could definitely go that way. I would rather we rest and then come back for it. I need to go towards the mountains. So let me show you real quick. Yeah, on the um, Sword Coast map, the bigger Sword Coast map. Um, and what's the unicorn's name? I couldn't catch it. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll type it in the... Yeah, he was very yeah, quick. Yeah, it like three words to me. <laughs> Tither and Yon. Yeah. Tither and Yon. Oh, I thought it was Tither and Yon. Yeah, that's what I was hearing. Uh, it yeah. was two different things. All right. Yeah. So you guys are here, and uh, the area of the woods that the squirrel described is basically this, you know, this stretch between here and the mountain that was once fire you would pick up as Mount Potan, right? So somewhere in this northern leg of the woods is what the squirrel was talking about uh just to you know help you decide what you want to what you guys want to do now let's go I'm, find a tavern I'm, in the uh, red alley or something well yep and then we have to go towards mount okay 
I need to get sloshed after Hot, that. No. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, I'm gonna mess that up. You know what I was talking about. It's hot now. It's actually not hot now. It was. Yeah, it's hot. not. It's cold to know. So you're checking out Rat Alley for a uh... somewhere around yeah, these. Parts. I guess I'm good. Yeah, over. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so you scroll That's down past good. this bridge. You pass by the Illust ruins, which are. Um, some preserved ruins of the ancient magical city of Illusk, uh, upon which this city, you know, was was built. Um, you scoot by the prisoners' carnival, oh. uh, which ostensibly is like the court of justice in Luskin. Um, it's you look in, you see not much of a defendant friendly court system going on you see prisoners in stockades you see uh citizens throwing you know eggs of rotten fruit at these people um you see them assembling uh some gallows for uh probably nothing happening today but you know something in the in the near future not a super great yeah uh, the storm cloaks and <laughs> Uh, you scoot down to uh, Rat Alley, which is this narrow alley. It is crowded by trash and crates and sacks, li you know, lining the the street. Um, lined on both sides by these low storehouses. Um, and in Rat Alley, you find the Fried Rat Restaurant and Inn. Sounds nice. Yeah, I wish I would be into that. <laughs> uh, and um, as you see, a, a half work kind of leave, you know, leaving uh, as you walk up, and um, he's wiping his mouth. He's got like you know grease on his chin. He says, "Thank, thank the gods, there's still a place in civilized society where you can get real rat meat." And then he, he walks away. Yeah. Liz Bob, you'll like it here. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah, I'm pretty hungry. Okay. Redmond's ready to eat. I'm oh. tired. Noss <laughs> is done um, fighting it. So, so yeah, it's a, a pretty gross bar, but I mean um more gross on the outside actually than the inside, right? It's you know, it's dimly lit. Mm -hmm. Uh the clientele are skeevy at best, you know. A lot of pirate types, um, a lot of, you know, kind of cut purses, you know, those kind of looking folk. Um, Redmond probably, like, gets a nod, you know, as it comes in, like, so. Um, but the wait staff is very friendly. They, they you know, uh, they have a surprisingly good beverage selection. Um, and they serve lots of things that are not rat meat, you know, more traditional things. But rat meat, they insist, is their specialty. Is there rooms to stay in? There are rooms to stay in if you want to stay the night. Yes. And Atlantis is going to be like, yes, I'm staying in your room. Saying? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, right. man. It's, uh... Uh, they tell you the price is one gold piece per room per night. Seems good enough. I'll, I'll take it. It, do, it does seem high. That seems very high. Yes, yeah, I'll, I'll pay, pay for a room, room as long as I don't have to stay alone. Literally, I, you you got it, pal. <laughs> <laughs> who, who's who's uh, Jeremy? I do have gold. I'll what? share with Liz Bob. I said I, I do hey. have gold. Snack friend. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna wake up in the morning and there will be no snacks left in your bag <laughs> so i would like to actually ask the barkeep here mm -hmm. how much would it cost for a type of endless food if you will where i pay a large amount up front but we can have kind of like a buffet you know we have two very hungry animals here oh food is included yeah, with uh with the rooms so just we can eat as much as we want with the room cost. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, have you paid for the rooms yet? I paid. I, yes, this room. <laughs> I'm paying now. All right. She, she takes your three gold pieces amongst you and says, amazing. I can't believe that worked. Yeah, you can eat as much as you want and pockets the three gold. You're going to regret that. What suckers. <laughs> Uh, right, so and they, I mean, the they are very pleased by this. You know, they they see you as like kind of suckers, but also, you know, you guys are friendly and you know, much more enjoyable to have as guests than a lot of the people they have right here. So they do they they prepare this bounteous buffet uh, and and bring it out. Uh, ale towers, you know, um, all sorts of great stuff, and. And plenty of beer. many varieties of uh, many preparations of rat meat as well. Redmond would like to take a look around the room and see if there's anybody <laughs> around um, not paying attention to their coin purse. Okay, make. Uh, I'm not paying attention to mine. Does that count? Perception check or an investigation check, your call. <laughs> we'll do investigation. Here it comes. Uh, 18, you do see uh, a man, uh, he is a, a half-orc in a sailor's hat, like a pirate hat, kind of. Um, he's got a pigeon on his shoulder, and uh, he is, like, very intent on, like, delicately feeding this <laughs> uh, And he has foolishly let his coat kind of slip and the the purse, you know, his, his coin purse on his belt, is hanging this way. Redmond would like to kind of. He's gonna actually get a look at Zelric, and be like, "I got this." Okay. And he's gonna try to cut the coin purse and take it. Okay. Make a sleight of hand check. <laughs> so I look like he's like a. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit. Let's right, go, mind. Rogue. Never mind, never mind what I was that... I don't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Let's go, Rogue. That, that you get five a... gold pieces. He that said, I got seven. It. He said, I got <laughs> this. Seven. And he did have it. <laughs> uh, okay, you get us six gold pieces out of this, this coin purse. See that? Which, That's called um, profit. Our money back and double Yeah. Down. <laughs> Everyone, take your gold pieces back. Yep. And, I'll, and then, as we First sit down one. at the bar, I'll say, "Hey, everybody, have a drink on me," and I flip everybody a little gold cup, gold pieces. How big is the bar top that the food is being laid out upon? Uh, so you guys have kind of a long table that they are are bringing out to, and it's not crowded in here. Um, there really are only like there are like three long tables in this room in a row. Uh, the there's the one you guys are at that you basically have the whole thing to yourselves. Um, you know, you're you're a tough looking group right now. You also are like all bloodied and bruised and are like walking in like let's eat. So people aren't gonna mess with you, right? They're they're not even gonna come sit at your table, right? They're like, oh, okay, that's cool. Is it um, like 10 or 15 feet long? Yeah, like 15 feet long, yeah. I would like to use three first level slots to purify food and drink for everything on the table. Okay. So just in case they tried lacing it with poison to try and steal yeah. our gold later. Very smart. Very smart. I had not thought of that, but that is a very luskiny thing that, could, that would happen. So, good thought. Was, I was very worried that the guy that uh, Redwood was about to steal from was going to be like a high captain or something. And he's just yep. like, yeah, the, the coin purse, <laughs> yeah, look at it. It's totally just dangling there. Come get it and see what happens. Uh, not today. Yeah. Uh, rolled insanely high. It's crazy. I wish yeah. I could roll a 30. <laughs> Um, but you, 
eat and drink your fill. Uh, it's surprisingly good, and it tastes like really. Now that you know Zephyr is, has blessed it, um, <laughs> it's it's really like clean, like this, like organic. You know, this is organic rat meat. This is really yeah. nice. Uh, fresh is this rat meat locally sourced? It is very much locally sourced. There, it is a renewable resource in Luskin. <laughs> oh, <God>. uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you've got fried rat. You've got rat on a stick. You know, you've got uh, rat feet. Soup. Free pasture. You've got. Do you have free pasture rat? Yeah, free, free range. Pasture. Uh, they're all all the rats are free range. They do not farm their rats. Yeah. They, oh yeah, free range. That's the right terminology. Nah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like it does Redmond like rat meat? I you know I don't know if like, he acquired it, that taste when he became a tabaxi. Well, he's finding out. He's 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 <laughs> thoroughly enjoying it and he's okay. acquiring the taste. Okay. Real time. <laughs> Is there anything that's not rat? <laughs> there is. There's uh, um, border you know, like squab, right? You've got um, lots of fish, right? Like fr fish and seafood. Um, Going for the seafood, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so that would be um, what's so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not eating the rat, guys. Yes. There I'm avoiding like, rat. Try one rat and then move on. No. Um, there's a lovely like winterberry dessert uh which you know with with berries that are sourced from icewind dale um it's like really surprisingly like you know this is this is a like the gem the hidden gem is the, you guys. Rat. It's the place to be <laughs> yeah <laughs> the seafood is divine <laughs> the seafood the is really good you are like right on the coast yeah yeah hey, Zilric, did you Go ahead. This book, did you have any interest in this book? Sorry, um, I didn't hear you. Start. No, yeah, <laughs> I want to know. See, if it, the it, book looks super, if it looks like super intricate or something, or has like any like fancy designs on it, I'm going to just grab it from Yas and stuff it in the bag. I don't want uh, <laughs> any wary eyes to be like, oh, what's that big fancy book that guy just has? I definitely won't, okay. I won't leave it out until we're out of less. I'm just like. Hiding it with my big palms. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, that will give me a chance to come up with what it is. So, okay. uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm casting comprehend languages, and I, with my keen mind, I can speed read. So I'm gonna need you to give it to me ASAP. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> You know, what I like to do in those situations, I'm like, okay, you tell me what it says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you will get a, uh, the rooms, not kind of surprisingly sparse, you know, kind of hard beds, uh, you know, given the quality of the food. Uh, but you all get a, a long rest, all of the benefits that come with that. And, um, morning comes 